Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's tonight, Thursday night in the Big 12. Stillwater, Oklahoma, Texas A&M getting set to take on Oklahoma State. The smoke is starting to smolder. Pistol Pete has riled up the crowd, and the Cowboys are getting set to open the gate and take the field here at T. Boone Pickens Stadium. Cowboys wearing black as Texas A&M has joined them now and both of these teams roll in here with high powered offenses. Gerard Johnson and Brandon Whedon the respective quarterbacks have spent the first month of the season pretty much bolstering that resume. Oklahoma State leads the nation in total offense and trail only Oregon in scoring. The Aggies aren't far behind on either count. Yet both teams undefeated unproven and untested at least until tonight. Glad to have you with us Thursday night in the Big 12. What a show it's going to be. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Brown's going to join us in just a little bit. Guys, let's be honest about it. First month of the season has largely been loading up on cupcakes for both teams. Now we get to the meat of the Big 12 schedule. Both teams look at this as a prove-it game. What did we learn about Oklahoma State tonight? This was supposed to be a rebuilding year for Oklahoma State. They only had nine starters coming back, but here they are. They're 3-0. and They've looked really good. They're probably playing better than head coach Mike Gundy would have anticipated so far early this year. They went out this offseason. They hired Dana Holgerson as their offensive coordinator. They've put up Xbox numbers so far early on that side of the ball. But... They haven't yet been tested. They're playing a good AM defense tonight. We'll find out just how good this Cowboy offense really These is. These numbers you guys are talking about kind of can be confusing, misleading. It's hard to really predict because they haven't played anybody, as you say. But tonight we'll find out whether the Aggies can hold on to the football. Nine turnovers in the last two games. I believe that Mike Sherman's team is far better athletically than they've been. I think the Aggies show up. I think this is going to be a good game, a barometer game for both teams. But I think Mike Sherman's sensing that this is the game where I think he launches his new athletic football team. Yeah, you know, both of these teams would like to be a factor in the Big 12 South race. If you're going to, you're going to have to win on the road. And the Aggies certainly have some great leaders and stars. Quarterback Gerard Johnson, linebacker Vaughn Miller. Both guys have had great statistics throughout their careers, but they haven't had a lot of wins. We spoke to both guys earlier this week. They said they want their legacy to be winning big games. Craig, they have an opportunity tonight to really lay the groundwork for that winning tradition down the road for the Aggies. Set me up with that groundwork, huh? You like that? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <Stand up. laughs> Segway, baby. Here we go. Kendall Hunter. Kendall Hunter, number 24, back in 08, was an All-American running back. 1,555 yards on the ground, 16 touchdowns. He was the man. Had to fight through injuries last season. All of a sudden, he's healthy. Now he's in this offense that's spread open. It's open. It's one-on-one -on -one with linebackers. He loves it. The 157 a game that he has, he could easily keep those numbers alive. Oklahoma State has put together back-to-back -to -back nine win seasons. The architect of that is Mike Gundy. He's with Jen Brown. Thanks, Coach. Brandon Whedon is making his first start in conference play tonight. What do you expect from him tonight? Well, I expect him to play very well. Brandon's worked extremely hard, and he's improved in each game and each practice. We expect him to play well. Von Miller, who led the nation in sacks last year, was 17. How are you going to slow him down? Well, we certainly need to be aware of where he is on the field. He's very good, and um, we need to keep him under control. We don't let him get to Brandon Whedon. All right. Thanks, Coach. Reese. And Gundy's counterpart for the Aggies tonight is Mike Sherman. Sherman, two games under 500 in his third year at Texas A&M. But, of course, he had a very successful run with the Green Bay Packers. Head coach there won three division titles, and he's put together huge offensive numbers during his time in Aggieland. Spectacular weather for football tonight. Temperature just a shade under 80. There's a little bit of a breeze that we felt down on the field when we were milling around in those tight quarters down here at Boone Pickens Stadium. Terrific atmosphere for football. Good crowd on hand on a Thursday night. Oklahoma State won the toss. They deferred, so Texas A&M will put it into play first. And this is a weapon for Oklahoma State. And Quinn Sharp led the nation in touchbacks last year and this season in 30 kickoffs. 30 kickoffs already. <laughs> 24 of them have been touchbacks. We'll see if the Aggies get an opportunity 
to return the kickoff tonight as we get set to go from Stillwater. As anticipated, there will be no return, and the Aggies will put it in play on their own 20-yard line, and they're led out by Gerard Johnson. When it's all said and done, Gerard Johnson statistically will be the greatest quarterback to ever wear a Texas A&M uniform. He's coming off a bad performance two weeks ago against Florida International. He threw four interceptions in that game. He's got to come out tonight, stay poised. He's a bounce-back performance. Those four interceptions that Johnson threw came on consecutive possessions in the third quarter before the Aggies rallied to win it in the fourth. First play from scrimmage coming, and there's number one who will lead the Aggie attack. First carry of the night is Kristen Michael picks up about five. One of the things you'll see in this offense, it's more pro style, far different than what you'll see from Oklahoma State. They rely heavily on the running game. They like to pound it up in there, and they have two really good running backs. Johnson's first pass is complete. Terrence McCoy has it for a first down. You see Texas A&M going with the up-tempo offense. Oklahoma State coaches didn't know what to expect. Remember, Texas A&M hasn't played on television yet this year. So they're finding out what the tempo is going to be. Bill Young, defensive coordinator, said, I called some of my buddies and coaches coaching to see what they thought. They said, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> we're going to find out. Johnson to run it. Gerard will get up close to the 35-yard line. Mike Sherman, despite his West Coast background with Texas A&M over the last year and a half or so, has picked up the tempo a little bit. Have a player down on the field for Oklahoma State. Looks like it's Justin Gent. Gent, the senior linebacker from Irving, Texas, who has played much better than defensive coordinator Bill Young could have hoped for this year, stepping in at a position where the Cowboys lost all three starters last year. And they're very thin this year. Middle linebacker Ori Lemon had to play all 82 snaps against Tulsa because he didn't have a backup. Get a chance to watch this again. There's Gent lowering his right shoulder on the collision. Oof. Yeah, and there, were, there was a lot more force going into Gent than there was him delivering it to those two or three players. So that's a... As you say, yeah, a very thin linebacking core uh, with a couple of true freshmen in the four-man rotation. Doesn't it scare you guys, though, when you watch guys try to make tackles with their heads down? You always hear coaches talking about, see what you hit. Keep your head up and your helmet up. That time, it looked like Jack kind of just lowered, lowered the boom. Didn't exactly see where he was going. We hope he's okay. Gent's collision with his teammate James Thomas. Certainly we hope he'll be okay. We'll check on his condition when we come back. We won't have better news than this all night here in Stillwater. Justin Gent, senior linebacker for Oklahoma State, who went down after colliding helmet to helmet with his teammate James Thomas, got up and tried it off the field. Now, I'm not so sure Justin Gent didn't knock himself out on contact. He makes the hit on Johnson. And you see his face slam against the turf right there. It tells me maybe he was unconscious after the hit. Oof. There is Gent. Trainers talking to him. He's replaced in the lineup as Gent by Tolu Moala. He too a senior from Inglewood, California. Second down and eight. Aggies have picked up a first down. Kristen Michael. It's a little bit of running room. It'll bring up third down. You see Mike Sherman calling a play going right at Moala, seeing if he can handle it over on that side. And I like the play calling by Mike Sherman. This football team wants to survive this hostile environment early in the first quarter. No better way to do that than run the football. Aggies converting a little over 50% on third down. Johnson got rid of it just in time. He's two for two. Jeff Fuller makes the grab. And the Aggies move the chains. Jesse, you and I were on the field before the game, and Tom Rossley, the coordinate, the quarterback coach, was saying, we face a defense in practice every day that moves so much with different blitzes. We're used to these things. Look how big and tall Johnson stood in there. 6'5", 250. He's not scared. 
play fake. Johnson, a lot of running room. He'll slide into Oklahoma State territory at the 45, should have the first down. Gerard Johnson has unbelievable athletic ability. He'll throw and then run when things break down. I think you and I watched him last Thanksgiving against Colt McCoy in Texas, and his legs, Reese, the legs, when he takes off and runs like that, that's what really makes him good. Iris Gray, part of the one-two punch in the backfield for the Aggies, gets absolutely nothing on his first carry. Since Bill Young took over on defense at Oklahoma State, they've been very good against the run. In fact, they've only given up one 100-yard runner in their last 16 games. This is Bill Young's second season here at Oak State. He's a very smart, successful defensive coordinator, and he's got these guys understanding what he's looking for. What Johnson's looking for is a play on second and long. It is, he throws and almost intercepted, and it is. Picked off by Markel Martin. Play action has been successful so far in this season, but the blitz hips inside. The block not being able to be held by Patrick Lewis, the right guard, and comes clean to hit him. It's the second time tonight that an Oklahoma State Cowboy hasn't been clean, but has gotten in the face of Jerron Johnson. That time, it was James Thomas, the outside linebacker, and that forces the errant throw and the big interception. So the nation's number one offense will take over after Johnson's fifth interception of the season. Cowboys averaging nearly 600 yards per game. And everybody will will come back to the sideline. I can only presume that what they're looking to see is if Martin got his hands underneath the ball. The referee tonight in the white hat is Mike Defee. Replay official is David Dumas. Ruling on the field was the interception. It has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. What do you guys think? You know, originally watching it live, I thought it was an incompletion. Looks like right there, Martin's able to pretty much get under that football. I think it's a catch, Greg. What do you I, think? I, I, I think it's a catch. There's nothing that's indisputable about overturning that. He's Hands definitely, yeah, he's got it in the his. body. That's a, catch. that's a catch. That's a great play. But strong safety, Markel Martin. Martin is a guy that is more noted as a big hitter. Wiped out a couple of face masks on his helmet this year. <laughs> Picks up his first interception. But this, this really is a, a difficult mental blow to AM's offense early on because they had focused so much on that. And they've heard so much this week about Gerard Johnson, four consecutive picks last week. And how about Oklahoma State defensively? Defensive coordinator Bill Young preaches, hey, turnovers, turnovers. And his goal is to get three a game. That's a great start. If this call stands, what a great start for the Cowboy defense. We were talking to Mike Sherman earlier in the week about Johnson's interceptions. One of the things that led to it, Johnson took six sacks in the first half against Florida International. He wanted to avoid sacks. So the ruling from the replay booth will be a popular one here. And the Cowboys coming up with a turnover on defense and putting the offense in business at their own 33. And you'll get your first look at Kendall Hunter, the standout running back for the Pokes. Brandon Whedon, Justin Blackman with his first catch of the night. And the offense is led by Whedon, a 26-year-old former baseball player. I had a chance to watch him throw this past summer at the Manning Passing Academy. He looks the part. He is the part. He's got a big league arm, no pun intended. <laughs> Kendall Hunter slips one in the backfield, but a lot more Aggies are there to greet him. Well, playing in the backfield and staying around Brandon Whedon is the goal of Tim DeRuiter, defensive coordinator at AM. They want to see if Whedon, the pitcher, the baseball guy, can take heat and pressure and make decisions from that. 
Third and nine facing Whedon. Quick pass to Hunter. Hunter hit immediately. Stayed on his feet, and the Aggie defense is swarming. And Oklahoma State will go three and out. Big strategic get part of this football game is between these two coordinators. Tim DeRuiter was at Air Force. Dana Holgerson, the offensive coordinator, now at Oak State. Four times down the last 31 games, Holgerson's gone against DeRuiter. They understand defensively what he's trying to accomplish. A lot of chess match going on. Flag flies. Aggies almost got to the punt of Quinn Sharp. A little fingertip grab by Kendrick McNeil. Flag is sitting on the 35-yard line. Right on the line of scrimmage. Hey, Coach Mike Gundy believes this is on the defense. He's, he's waving over the return team. He's waving over the decline. <laughs> Mike Sherman doesn't want to worry about a guy <laughs> dropping a ball on a punt return. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. One great play. Fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Ryan Tannehill, backup quarterback, go back and just fair catch punts. I mean, I, I, I stood behind the punt return guys on Monday at practice at A&M with Mike Sherman, and he was like, man, I don't think for a second, Craig, that I wouldn't put Tannehill back there if my guys can't make a clean catch on a punt return. Well, he can do everything. He's one of the best athletes on the A&M team, quarterback, receiver, punter, punt returner, whatever you want. When McNeil is in there, Dustin Harris has returned some this year. He took one back for a touchdown, did Harris earlier this year, but the Aggies have had problems fielding it, and Sharp drives McNeil back to his 10. Good, solid return for the sophomore from Spring, Texas, and the Aggies will have it for the second time tonight. Neither offense, high-powered though they are, has been able to mount a scoring threat. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. See what's new on Applebee's two for 20 menu, classics you love, and new flavors you'll crave. And in part by Budweiser, great times are waiting. Grab some buds. We arrived here at Boone Pickens Stadium yesterday. You saw the kids camping out in the tents on the outside. But I mean, they're not exactly roughing it with the plasma screens out there and the, and the cooking utensils. It's a different age than Boy Scouts when we were kids. <laughs> Aggies get it for the second time tonight. Their first drive ender, ended in a Gerard Johnson interception. They'll put in play at their own 31. Cyrus Gray. Very short pickup. Moala, who checked in for the injured Justin Jett, who, by the way, been taken back to the locker room for further examination and observation. Moala made the stop. Two weeks ago against FIU, Gerard Johnson threw four interceptions. Head coach Mike Sherman told us he was seeing ghosts. Wasn't trusting his eyes. He was pressing, overthinking. He has to just allow the defense to predicate where to throw the ball tonight. He'll run it this time. Again, Moala is everywhere, another tackle for 59. And, and when he talks about seeing ghosts, that's because Gerard Johnson's so smart, wants to be a coach one of these days. Really intelligent football player. Sometimes you can outthink yourself. Every time a play's called, you wonder, eh, I think I've seen this before. That's what they're trying to do. Aggies have converted their only third down opportunity. Hope showing some blitz. And a freshman left tackle, Luke Jokel, who came in in the spring and immediately earned the starting spot at that all important left tackle spot. Couldn't hold his water at that time. It's the noise, loud, on the road, hostile environment. Oklahoma State showing pressure. Gerard Johnson trying to audible. Communication is at a premium for AM early. Johnson wanted to throw the screen to Gray. It never got set up. He spiked it, and the Aggies will punt it away. I think this is part of the the process that you go through as a quarterback knowing when to burn it you know don't throw a pick here get rid of the football punt the ball punting 
Well, we've already seen a 59 yard punt from Quinn Sharp. This is where the Cowboys could really get some hidden yardage tonight. Ryan Epperson. A low line drive. Justin Gilbert is going to let hit. And the Aggies will tap it down just inside the 25. For the first Saturday of October, what games we have coming your way? Highlighted by the Pac-10 showdown between Stanford and Oregon. Both teams ranked for the first time, both in the top 10. Winner, a legitimate national championship contender. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Part of tailgate week, fired up by Kings for Charcoal, ABC, ESPN2, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. There are a couple of the stars. Andrew Luck, LaMichael James. Both hugely important to their teams, as Kendall Hunter is for Oklahoma State. A saving tackle in the corner by Terrence Frederick. That is such an outstanding tackle on the corner in space with an All-American candidate, Frederick, going through the legs, wrapping up Hunter. Kendall Hunter's averaged 6.25 yards per carry in his career. Only Barry Sanders is better. Barry's better than pretty much everybody. <laughs> yeah. Whedon, he coming behind. Ball's loose. They threw the beanbag. It's a fumble. Looks like AM's got it. Von Miller. Frederick applying the pressure. And Miller, who is looking for his first sack, instead comes up with a loose football. Tim DeRuiter is a mastermind at the 3-4 scheme on defense for the Aggies, and what he's best known for is disguising the pressures. If you're playing quarterback, that clock's got to be going off in your head. And you saw the left side of the line so focused on Von Miller, number 40. They took care of the All-American, no question. The guy who had 17 sacks last year, and the corner comes clean. Texas A&M did not believe that, that Whedon could could handle the pressure in the pocket of blitzes. It's a lot different playing against Washington State, Tulsa, and Troy. This is a big time defense. The defense is much improved from a year ago when they ranked 105th in the country. On first down, nothing there for Kristen Michael. This is a huge opportunity for Texas A&M. You don't want to pick up the ball here and have to settle for three. Punch this one in. I mean, you can take some of the wind out of the sails of this crowd. I mean, your defense so far in two series has been dominating. To give you the turnover inside the red zone, you have to capitalize here if you're Texas a now. Aggies red zone numbers as it pertains to scoring touchdown rather average. Movement in the middle. Johnson throwing the fade, putting it up, and it is a... Grabbed by Jeff Fuller, but there were flags all over the place. Hey, Jeff Fuller. We'll let the men in strife sort it out. Also, so the touchdown pass will stand, and with that catch, Jeff Fuller. Now has his 20th career touchdown reception. He stands alone atop the Aggie record books. One of the things the coaching staff told us, Jeff Fuller really improved this offseason was his leaping ability and his ability to time his jumps. Perfectly executed, high points the football. Randy Bullock puts it through, and the Aggies are able to cash in on a defensive opportunity. Gerard Johnson throwing his eighth touchdown pass of the year, but it was all made possible by the blitz from the corner. Terrence Frederick put it on the ground. Von Miller collected it, and from there, Johnson and Fuller did the rest, and the Aggies strike first. The Rose, Fiesta, Orange, Sugar, and the Tostitos BCS National Championship game. ESPN, the BCS lives here. There is a reason Gerard Johnson is going to be regarded as the greatest quarterback in Texas A&M history. Not only the prolific numbers, but the leadership with his offensive line, bouncing back from the interception and taking advantage of the turnover force by the Aggie defense, which would like to get back to those wrecking crew days when they were 
routinely disruptive of offenses and shut them down and certainly at least in the early going in the first quarter they've done so against Oklahoma State. Seven nothing pokes about to get it back. It'll be Victor Johnson on the return. Johnson will get it up just across the 20 yard line. So in the last series, guys, defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter, who came to Texas A&M from Air Force, against Dana Holgerson, as you mentioned earlier, Craig, Holgerson and DeRuiter faced off three times in the previous 18 months, the last time in the Armed Forces Bowl, and they absolutely shut down Case Keenum in that attack, picked him off six times, held him to just a little over 200 yards. Yeah, a lot of, lot of disguising, a lot of movement in that secondary. We're seeing early on right here, DeRuiter has a really good game plan defensively. Brandon Whedon firing up top. And the grab was made by Justin Blackman. Justin Blackman is a guy that Dana Holgerson compares a little bit to Michael Crabtree when Holgerson was coaching at Texas Tech. He said he's not yet there, but he has the same ball skills. Hunter, the quick carry. I don't think they wanted to give the replay move the chance to look to make sure Justin's toe wasn't touching the white. Uh, Blackman leads the nation receiving yards per game, nearly 144 per. He leads the nation in scoring and in touchdown set. And you know what? This offense, they want to get to the line of scrimmage and to try to confuse the Aggies on defense because of the early success. Whedon. This is complete to Bo Bowling and Folks will move the change. What about Blackman's catch? We'll see. I have a chance here to see if he got that one foot down. He goes up for the ball. Ooh, that left toe looks like it yeah. may be out. But give Dana Holgerson credit. They got that super tempo. There's three different tempos on offense. Fast, faster, and fastest. And he went to gear three. Weeding the throw, and he's got that strong arm long across the field. He was looking for Cotton Shelf. And, and Holgerson says that he really just feels it in a game. He doesn't really know when he's going to go fast, faster, or fastest. But obviously that one there, he said, look, let's get this thing over with. Let's snap it. Well, and against this pressure defense, he says he has a lot of plays tonight that they're just run it plays. There's no audibles. It's good against anything Texas A&M does because it, it can't be kind of messing around, trying to protect everything every play. <laughs> Bowling has it again and put it on the ground. Had it for a second. Tried to take off with it before he secured the football, and now the Cowboys looking at a third and ten. I kind of look like one of those plays where, where Hogerson says that he teaches Whedon one, two, three, check it down to Hunter. You know, just making his progressions and get rid of the football. There is Dana Hogerson. Worked at Texas Tech with Mike Leach in the last couple of years at Houston as the offensive coordinator. Tweak this system a little bit for a little bit more running. Whedon will throw it on third and ten. That is a dangerous ball into the middle of the field, and Brandon's lucky he got that one back. Defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter's pressure system stem all the way from Pittsburgh Steelers defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau. He brings them from all over the place. Yeah, you can see here how they dropped out Jesse, you know, and that just puts a different look in front of that pitcher's mind. That old baseball player didn't see that when he was traveling on school buses around the country. That single A ball? No. When Sharp Hunt Neal signaled for the fair catch. And he makes it at the 15. That's where the Aggies will get it back. Now for tonight's weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's. Two games matching top 10 teams, two more matching top 25 teams. A plethora of shakeout type games this weekend. How about the Florida offense really waking up, getting sparked against Kentucky? Trey Burton is a new little wrinkle in that offense now in those Wildcat packages going against the big time Alabama defense. All right, Gator Mass, you, you like Burton? I, I, I think I'd go with uh, Mr. Mark Ingram. It's a good pick. What about his bathtub, Trey Richardson? Either or. Been looking for nicknames for those two. A pretty good one-two punch for the Aggies at running back. Rod Johnson gets it out to Hudson Prelo and big tight end swinging out there. It's a good gain on first down. Not 
not even Halloween. All dressed up and ready to go in the final football night of September. Pressure coming. Johnson takes a hit. Looking for Ryan Swope. Pressure was coming from Markel Martin. Bill Young's not known to sit back and get hit in the mouth very often. If he thinks an offense is moving, he'll change it up and he'll come after you. Now a third down facing Johnson. And right now, really going both defenses, having the better of these two offenses who put up great numbers in their first three games. Those are what ratcheting the competition will do. Johnson on the scramble and he has to throw it away again. Jamie Blatnick applying the heat. It's the second time on third down. Johnson just had to get rid of the ball. It is a very young offensive line for Texas A&M. They have not yet gelled. This is only a three-step drop, and you look at the penetration Oklahoma State with Jamie Blatnick is able to get. Draw Johnson has no chance. Bill Young. Fired up with his stop troops as they force the Aggies to punt it again. It'll be Ryan Epperson. Justin Gilbert deep to receive. And nowhere. Good coverage by the Aggies punt team. And Oklahoma State will have it back. Already touched on the weekend a little bit. Boy, Saturday afternoon, three college football games available regionally on ABC or ESPN. Mac Brown in Texas after what Mac termed an embarrassing performance against UCLA have a chance to atone in the Red River rivalry and some are going to see Wisconsin and Michigan State Virginia Tech and North Carolina State Wolfpack of Tom O'Brien we saw a couple of weeks ago still unbeaten college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings part of tailgate week on ABC or ESPN at 3:30 Eastern. Brandon Whedon. Fires it well behind his intended target, Hubert Ania. Keep in mind, in Dana Holgerson's offense, they don't like to keep a lot of guys in to protect. It's on Brandon Whedon to get the football out against the pressure to the right places. Especially tonight when you've got number 40, an All-American over there, and Von Miller. You don't want to spend too much time in the pocket with a football in your hand. Miller led the nation in sacks last year, looking for his first of this year, but he's already applied heat on Whedon. Pass is complete. Randall out of the backfield. And Joseph Randall, the freshman, who will spell Hunter. They're very high on this young man. And they should be. He's a very talented individual. I like him like Marcus Lattimore at South Carolina. It's a true freshman. How they put their foot in the ground and they go. Folks trying to get it off quickly, and the flags were flying. And at the wide receiver Justin Blackman for the false start and, and that's the problem with the with the fastest part yeah, of that yeah. equation right Jesse you know oh, yeah. you, you can mess yourself up super speed tempo sounds great theoretically but guys have to get lined up and set and that's on the quarterback to make sure everybody is so now it's third and seven Whedon stands in, fires into traffic, it is intercepted. Dustin Harris, his second pick of the year. Again, we'll, I think, credit Tim DeRuiter, defensive coordinator, a little bit here with game plan and coaching. Jesse, this is a quarterback's nightmare when that corner falls back in. You have to be careful with this throw. He's trying to throw it over top of somebody into a small window to his wide receiver, Josh Cooper. Josh Cooper got up. He started yelling back at Brandon Whedon. He didn't like having the football even thrown to him in the first place. Sensing some frustration early here for Oklahoma State. He saw that corner coming yeah. back. He wasn't staying at home. He dropped back into coverage. On first down, Kristen Michael. Rumbling into Cowboy territory. He gets inside the 35. This is a really nice job here. Watch the guard pull and come out to the outside. Beautiful job there following up inside. And when you give Kristen Michael that kind of room, big game. Give it right back to him. 
Michael trying to get the corner. He does a flag flies just about the spot where Michael was able to turn the corner. And this one might be coming back. He's looking immediately on the perimeter of the field blocking maybe a hole downfield. Uzoma Wachiku, wide receiver, trying to help out his running back is the one who is nabbed for holding until a big gain is nullified. But how about Mike Sherman? No matter where he's been calling plays, whether it's the Green Bay Packers, whether it's here at Texas A&M, he's always been a run first guy. Johnson. Goes it along the sideline and they will rule that one incomplete. Watch Wachiku stood up showing them the football but the officials right on top of it. I think Jesse early on I can see here in the film study that we've done that tonight Trot Johnson's throwing the ball a lot more confidently than he did. That, that, I didn't see the ball fall out on that. Did you? I thought he hit the ground. Did you? Yeah. Well, just as he got his hands on it and went to the ground. Bring up second and 15 for the Aggies. Johnson taking a shot. Traffic out there. Incomplete. Markel Martin, the intended target once again was Wachiku. This is a tricky throw for Gerard Johnson because Wachiku is able to run by the safety after the hard play action fake. But the ball hangs in the air too long, and it allows the backside corner to get involved and break up this play. Johnny Thomas, the safety, is run by. You see number 10, Markel Martin, doing a great job with his speed, getting back in the play. They're each able to outcompete the receiver for the football. Well, watch a coup. Struggled to get to his feet, and he tried to make it to the A&M sideline, and they're tending to him right now just outside the 10-yard line. He Went up in traffic and landed hard on his back. Watch a go a sophomore who earned a starting position as a freshman last year. Still plays a lot, been surpassed at least in terms of starting by Terrence McCoy. Wachiku, a, a big play guy for the Aggies. You know, a lot of people thought heading into this year, this may have been the best Texas A&M receiving core of all time. I mean, when you think about guys like Jeff Fuller, Terrence McCoy, Ryan Swope, Wachiku, I mean, there's some big weapons on the perimeter of the field for Gerard Johnson. They had high hopes this year. Guys like Ryan Swope stepping up and really coming into his own, picking up where he left off at the end of 09. Comes in now, he's got 13 catches against SFA in one game. So. Might be right, Jesse. A lot of talent out there. Norrin's rising up on third and a long 15. Bailed out of the pressure. Complete. Got his tight end, the freshman Nehemiah Hicks. He'll be short of the first down as Ori Lemon is there to stop him. Very smart play, though, by Gerard Johnson. He's got a talented, true freshman tight end that has a ton of upside. We're talking in playing field position and understanding your defense is playing well. Not trying to force a big completion downfield and risk an interception. Check the football down. Give your head coach the, the option of trying to kick a field goal, but he will not. We're going to go for it. Fourth down and five. It's on the edge of Randy Bullock's range. And Sherman will try to pick up the five. Deion Johnson fires it complete just across the 25 yard line. I think with a spot they're going to give him the first down. It's Terrence McCoy. That's an unbelievable play by Gerard Johnson. His eyes came down really quickly at the back of his drop. He looked like he was off getting ready to run able to buy himself time and then make a play creating. I get the feeling Gerard is feeling even just a three-man rush. He respects the tenacity of that Oklahoma State defensive line and knows he's got to make a quick decision. Johnson. 
toward the end zone and overshoots McCoy. It'll be an interesting chess match here between head coach Mike Sherman and defensive coordinator Bill Young. Oklahoma State safeties are really close to the line of scrimmage. They want to get involved in that running game and stop that. There's going to be some big shots available for Gerard Johnson, but they have to hit him. And Oklahoma State graduated both of their corners who are outstanding, including Parrish Cox. They feel the corners this year are really good. They're untested, unproven. He thinks they're an upgrade from last year. You believe that? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten. Pressure. Johnson has to get rid of it. There's Tannehill with the catch. And the backup quarterback slash has it inside the ten. It'll be first and goal for the Aggies. Jesse, how nice is it to know that when you've got a guy out here on the right-hand side that you can depend on a backup quarterback to know the blitz is coming and be dependable? It's a confident throw by Gerard Johnson, bailing back on his back foot. He's so dialed into this game plan, he knows there's not going to be a defender on that blitz that can get involved. Shift the formation. Johnson. To the end zone, he just threw that one out of the back. Blatnick was again applying the pressure. Texas A&M comes into the game running the football. We've seen a lot of play action passing since, trying to soften up this defense from Oklahoma State. Throw to get ahead, run to win. Throw to score. <laughs> run to win. Boy, he threw the ball to the, the camera operator behind the end line there. He knew where to get rid of the football. Second and goal. Michael stops short. And, and I think that, guys, that's the part of, of football and, and of offense that I like is the ability to get up there under center with a quarterback taking the snap and, and short yardage goal line and get after it. You know, the best red zone teams in the country are the ones that can run the ball down close. This is a pro style offense you're seeing from Mike Sherman and AM. Got Michael Lamoth in at fullback. Shovel pass. Touchdown, Cyrus Gray. The guys, the Aggies were able to take advantage of that heat and flip it to Gray for the touchdown. When you do this right here, this play action, the linebackers, watch those linebackers in the orange and what they do. As soon as they see that the ball is not there, they turn and they bail out. They're going to coverage. And that's going to slow down the pass rush in the future as well. They're really pinning their ears back. Extra point is good. Johnson has two short touchdown passes, and on the night, he has become the Aggies' all-time leading passer. But most importantly, AM on the road, up by two touchdowns. Kickoff after the Texas A&M score, returned by Victor Johnson, and the Aggies get him on the ground just short of the 30-yard line. First quarter, long way to go. But Brandon Wheaton in this Oklahoma State offense, they, they need to kick it up a notch. Getting gears, you see Johnson return the kick. A little bit slow to get up. Being down 14-0 against a dialed-in Aggie defense is not where you want to have Brandon Wheaton right now. You know, Again, they're running a 3-4 scheme on defense for Oklahoma State, or for Texas A&M. It's not what you're used to seeing each and every week in the Big 12 Conference. Here's a look at Johnson on the return. It's hard to tell. Ball came out at the end, but seemed to be favoring his knee. I'm not even sure if the pain and discomfort came on contact. We'll check on Victor Johnson. Yeah, and, and also keep in mind, there are a lot of Texas kids at Oklahoma State. What are they, 22? Almost half of their top. I went through the roster today. They have 60 kids from Texas on their roster. Wow. 24 listed in the two deep wow. from the state of Texas. So this is all of the conference games are important. But I think particularly for Texas kids, and, and you know this, yeah. growing up in the state, the, the, the football was so important there. A lot of the kids either played against each other in high school or at least know of each other. And it's important when they play schools from the state of Texas. Mike Gundy 
has uh, done a great job, like going to Lufkin, Texas. That's the challenging the ruling on the field that there was a in the kickoff. Mm, interesting. Okay. That, we, like Des Bryant, I just want to finish yeah, that. Sure. Lufkin, yeah. Des Bryant, just a lot of talent that comes to Stillwater to play. The improved facilities here, too, certainly helped Mike Gundy in that regard to be able to get closer to a level playing field, particularly against Texas A&M. Now, you see Johnson, the leg was hurting, and that's what the focus was, but it, you see. I think the ground causes ground. that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, believe the, I believe the whole hip might have been down, too, but the ball was loose at the end, so A&M has used a challenge to try to get another turnover. They've already gotten two from the Cowboys tonight. They turned both into touchdowns, one on a very short drive inside the 10, the last one, an 11 play 55 yard drive. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball was down. Oklahoma State's ball first and 10. Touchdown in was charged with the timeout. So Mike Sherman loses the timeout with the challenge and doesn't get the ball, but thought it was worth the shot. Things have been going his way in the first quarter. Might as well spin that wheel of fortune and see if he can come up with the ball again. Now it's on Brandon Whedon in this Cowboy offense to get something started. Let's watch these guys there. Let's see how they rotate three and four. They mix and match. Flags flying. That's already Oklahoma State's third penalty on the night. They came into the game almost averaging eight a game, 93rd in the country. They're playing at home. There's not a noise issue. Got to clean it up. All three of the penalties, Jesse. False starts. Pressure on Whedon. Let's see quickly to Bryant Ward, his fullback, and there's not much doing. You know, for the first time in a long time, head coach Mike Gundy is not calling plays. Dana Holgerson, this is his offense, his scheme. Mike Gundy told us, look, I don't know all the intricacies of this offense, so I stay out of it. He's been more involved in defense, made him a better coach. You know, in past years, we've seen Gundy on the sideline drawing up plays with the offense while the defense was playing. Reverse and him had it sniffed out. Blackman. Can't get him on the ground, and now they do. A huge loss and a tremendous play by Jonathan Stewart. Mathis also back there for the Ags. This is this is why I know and believe Tim DeRuiter knows exactly what's coming at him. Did you see the backside, Stewart? As soon as he saw play action with that ball, where did he go? For the reverse, didn't he? It's a lot of speed on defense. If you're going to have slow developing plays for Oklahoma State, you better hit it because these Aggies can run. Third and to Tulsa. <laughs> Randall Hunter knocked out of bounds, got a good hold, a big hit. It's like Trent Hunter is over there along with Coriel Judy. It'll be fourth down. But do you get the feel though of, of DeRuiter and understanding of the Aggies how they're dialed in on plays? Yeah, you know, it just again, very hard to game plan for because they move guys around, they get up the field, they bring, they show you pressure one way, they bring it from another side. Hard to game plan for. Sharp gets the punt out of there, and it's another boomer. McNeil has it. Kendrick will get across the 20 yard line as we go back to the studio and check in with John Saunders. Maurice, it's time for Sports Center right now, brought to you by Keystone Light. Buster Posey homered for the San Francisco Giants to beat Arizona 4 to 1 on Thursday. Now they're just one win away from a division title. Giants completing a three-game sweep, and they won for the eighth time in the last ten games. Meanwhile, the Padres, who are holding up hope right now in a scoreless tie with the Chicago Cubs. Reese, back to you. All right, John, Padres and Braves locked in that wild card battle in the National League. Aggies get it after the 60-yard punt from Sharp. Quick completion, still on his feet to Swope. And Swope looked as if he were going to lose five or six. Instead, he picked up about five. Swope's a high school running back. He just showed you he didn't forget how to carry the football. He ran about 40 yards to get four. Impressive effort, no question about it. Make that a positive play. 
That one appeared to be doomed, and we're winding down to the final seconds in the first quarter, and a quarter that has been a very good one for Mike Sherman's Texas A&M Aggies. A&M taking advantage of a pair of Oklahoma State turnovers and cashing them in. Just about to start the second quarter here in Stillwater, Texas A&M on top of Oklahoma State, 14 to nothing. The Aggies taking advantage of a couple of Cowboy turnovers, and you see the rush yards for Oklahoma State minus 13. That's largely due to a couple of huge losses. They lost 37 yards on two plays. A&M's cashed in both turnovers, and so far the nation's number one offense hasn't done anything. A&M, meanwhile, the quick completion from Gerard Johnson out to Ryan Swope. Gets it close to the 30. You know, we talked about Mike Gundy no longer calling plays for Oklahoma State. Two seasons ago, Mike Sherman took over the play calling duties at Texas A&M. They've had a lot of success. It's gone to a more up-tempo style of offense. They've had some big production. And I like the, the combination. You've got Tom Rossley, who was the coordinator at Green Bay Packers, worked with Brett Favre. He's working with the quarterbacks here. It's just a, there's a lot of coaching going on. Third down run from Kristen Michael. He appears to have been stopped short of that yellow line. Bring up a fourth down for AM. If one thing is true when you look at Oklahoma State on defense, they are big in the front seven. They're linebackers, I and mean, they almost look like D-line. They can play, they play downhill. Tough sledding on short yard. Significant stop for the Cowboys. Sherman has sent out the punt team. Or at least it looked as if he was going to. Now the offense is still on the field. They're lining up quickly. Let's see if they actually are going to snap it here. They do. Right, Johnson used that big 6-5 frame to push forward and depend on the spot. Ori Lemon got in there. Ooh. Wow. You're inside your own 35, up two <laughs> oh, touchdowns man. on the road. Cat and mouse. How about the confidence Mike Sherman showing in his offense up well, front, a young offensive line too. How about the maturity and the patience of Gerard Johnson? Watch him come back and find the little slot to the right. You know, he just didn't bury his head and plow up in there. If he probably got the first down. I think he also got a generous spot. 6'5", 245-pound frame worked out well. Pass is complete to Fuller. He's stopped immediately by Broderick Brown. I like the play calling right now by Mike Sherman. He's getting the football out of Gerard Johnson's hands fast. The last three passes now have been quick out to the perimeter of the field. You saw Fuller work back for that ball. That was a long throw to the flat. That cost him last week. One of his receivers did not work back. Not much for Kristen Michael. You know, talk about Mike Sherman's play calling during his time at Green Bay. They set several franchise records. He, had, of course, had Brett Favre. He had Amon Green running the ball. And during his first five years of the six, his winning percentage was second only to Vince Lombardi. Wow. I mean, I mean, they they put up wins. They won division titles. They moved the football. I'd like to pick up a third down here. Johnson complete to McCoy. He'll have enough for another Aggie first down. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here thinking AM's going to be conservative on this and not make a bad call. How about a throw, Jesse, from this distance? Wide field comeback against bump and run coverage. But Gerard Johnson tonight's been very accurate, guys, throwing those balls to the outside of the field. Michael had three consecutive 100-yard running games. He's yet to really get loose tonight. He gets up to midfield. And, 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 you know, when you get the tempo here now, here's an Oklahoma State defense that's got to make a play. They've been on the field. They had a fourth down converted on them. There's no question they're having to carry Oklahoma State right now. Bill Young's going to have to dial up some stuff and create a turnover. Completion, another first down. 
Another good strong run by the former high school running back Ryan Swope. Nice job by Gerard Johnson looking outside sees Ryan Swope in the slot and there's a huge cushion from his defender so pitch and catch throw it out there let him go get the first. The Aggies showing some tempo. Michael plowing ahead he's down to the 30 pick up of about five. Now, now you start looking at tempo of Texas A&M's offense and feeling that foot on the throat. <laughs> They're running behind Kristen Michael. He's only one of seven backs coming into this game in the country that has 100 yards in every game he's played so far on the ground. Has he played other games not on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> or in the air? <laughs> I want to see that. Michael floating a little bit on the air to the outside, but he stopped after a short game. You know, Kristen's first name is a bit unique. He said that uh, his mom had hoped that the firstborn child would be a girl, so she picked out the name Kristen, and then when it turned out to be a boy, unique name. Well, if it makes, him feel, if it makes him feel better, the running back on the other team's first name's Kendall. <laughs> that could have been an Aflac question. <laughs> Next week, maybe. Third down. Batted into the air and intercepted. Hugo Tanasa. Tried to cut Chanasa's legs down so that the, the quick ball to the flat could be thrown, but he did a nice job of using his hands and then getting them up. Well, it's just smart. He realizes he's not going to get to the quarterback. So he does a nice job using his hands to stay off the cut block so he stays on his feet. Just that athletic frame, six foot five, to get up and make the play. Chanasa had a Pick six the last time these two played in Stillwater sets up Kendall Hunter and he bounces out of bounds and the flag's going to fly and they're going to get a personal foul added to it. trouble with the mic but it is a personal foul against Garrick Williams the linebacker from A&M. Boy how the game turns on a dime when your defense steps up Bill Young's group had to make the play and the offense ready to go when they got the opportunity. Whedon. Has to throw it away. Well, this time Brandon had plenty of time to find a receiver but good coverage by the Aggies. Well Justin Blackman wasn't wide open off the get go but he did a nice job working back to his quarterback and he was slapping his hands asking for the football. Whedon doesn't see him. He could have had a game. He'll give it to Hunter. Kendall stays on his feet and gets inside the 15. He'll be about three yards short of the first. And I think that last play is indicative of a young quarterback. He might be an old guy, but he's still young and experienced. And, you know, and DeRuiter said, I'm going to back up and not let you throw anything beyond. He's 26 years old, but he's really only played three and a half games of football here in this Oklahoma State offense. Hunter hit for no gain. Von Miller making the stop for the Aggies. So now Mike Gundy's offense looking at a fourth down. This is an area of the field they've been very successful 16 for 16 in the red zone this year. It's, this here this is all about momentum right he knows the defense gave him something we got to do something with it they've gone for it on fourth down it's our turn. Cowboys need to get it to the 10 for the first down. Play fake pressure Wheaton hit as he throws in, intercepted. Michael Hodges. Mm -hmm. 
Lionel Smith came charging. Whedon took the hit, and it's another turnover. Fellas, that's twice now. Corners have come from the Ags. Hit the quarterback, and he didn't see it nor expect it coming. The first time, it was Frederick, and it led to Texas A&M's first touchdown, and this time it stops the Cowboys' best threat. Back in Stillwater, Texas A&M on top of Oklahoma State, 14-0. A gamble by Mike Gundy and Dana Holgerson didn't pay off. Here's Justin Blackman at the bottom of the screen. He's yelling at his quarterback, trying to point to the corner, saying, hey, pressure's coming. Look out here. Get ready to throw it quick. But Brandon Whedon doesn't see it. And he's the only option in the route. There's one receiver, one option downfield. That's it. And so Whedon had to wait on that particular receiver to go to the middle of the field. And there's no way against a corner blitz that that can work. You see on the left of your screen back in amongst the crowd, the man who put the pressure on, Lionel Smith. The man who picked it off is Michael Hodges. First carry going to Gray. Hodges just today was named a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy, which is basically the academic high school. He is a standout student. He is pursuing an MBA. He started his college career at the prep school for the Air Force Academy. Tim DeRuiter, defensive coordinator, who came here from Air Force did not coach him but knew of him. Pleased with the last play. Big stop in the backfield on Gray by Moala. We're seeing two active defenses with a lot of speed up front causing problems for each offense. Yes, the score is 14 0. But guys, we've already had five turnovers in this game. A little late now, but. I wonder if maybe Gundy had been well served just to get some points on the board with that last fourth and three it resulted in the fifth turnover of the night for both teams combined. Johnson needs six. Gets the yardage, and again, it's been Terrence McCoy when they've needed to move the change has been out there. Jesse, you and I are up here watching, and you're immediately looking at Nehemiah Hicks, aren't you? The tight end underneath, they can throw it under. What's well, nice patience waiting on McCoy to come over? But again, Gerard Johnson showing you his confidence, throwing the football on these slow developing routes to the perimeter of the football field. He's been very accurate on the comeback throws. Draw. Nothing doing. <laughs> Cowboys ready for that one. <laughs> Shane Jarka, who's Coming off a knee injury, had a little minor surgery after the Washington State game, just working his way back into the lineup. He's in the backfield for the Pokes. Well, Mike Sherman, again, trying to slow this pass rush down with draws, misdirections, anything he can do to get the pressure out of Gerard Johnson's face. Johnson, he's feeling the heat, and down he goes. You go, Chinasa. You know, Chinasa, he's just one of those guys that's relentless, a high motor, very fast. And Draw Johnson seemed to have the right protection on up front. They just got beat. You know what? They had Chinasa working against a small running back in Cyrus Gray that weighs under 200 pounds. Nice scheme by Bill Young to get that dialed up. Young said that Chinasa has never made a mental mistake. That might be hyperbole, but he's very high on the instinctive play of his defensive end. Aggies keep it on the ground. Michael picking his way, but he is nowhere near the first down. There's a little more room for the punt team. This is where the professional background comes into play for Mike Sherman. He's up 14-0, and he's got a defense that's doing extremely well. Don't do anything crazy before halftime. Ryan Epperson will punt it away for the Aggies. Steve Gilbert calls for and makes the fair catch. And the Cowboys will have it back, trying to take care of the football and get something on the board before halftime. Let's take a look at tonight's intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. 
this defense has been dialed in the pressure especially off the corner Jesse Wheaton's not seeing it well they're moving guys around they're making it difficult for this offense to see where the pressure is coming from Wheaton forced this interception into coverage but in the end you know really it's set up all 14 points so far for Texas A&M and that has been the difference the turnovers that A&M's been able to force A&M's defense has been able to counter the miscues by the Aggies. Brandon Whedon responsible for all three turnovers as you see Victor Johnson who's been returning kicks for the Cowboys headed to the locker room and heard a leg on the return earlier. So first and ten for Whedon. In the flat to his fullback, Brian Ward, and that's not much. Well, this offense here at this point has a total of 39 yards. They're used to averaging 150 a quarter. You have to wonder about Whedon's confidence after the three turnovers. Get on the ground to Hunter. A&M is there to snow him under Jonathan Mathis leading the way. You, know, you have an All-American caliber player like Kendall Hunter in your backfield. You want to get him touches. Now, Dana Holgerson threw it 66% of the time last year at Houston. That type of back, you know, they've almost been 50-50 this year. Holgerson's offense is yet to convert a third down, and they'll need 10 yards to do it this time. Time for Whedon. Right down the middle, complete and first down. Bo bowling on the grab. The former baseball pitcher can throw the fastball. <laughs> I think this here is poor timing on the defense. You're going to see the left side. Plenty of time for Whedon to recognize a blitz coming and the line to pick it up and then to throw down the field. That's a lot of confidence. You had a linebacker, Sean Porter, in the way of that throw. That easily could have been intercepted. First down. Whedon, Randall hit immediately by Sean Porter. Now you're seeing Dana Holgerson try to slow down the rush from Texas A&M with the slow developing screen game. That cat and mouse going back and forth. Blackman. Justin gets down to about the 41. He'll be a little over a yard short in the first down. And it's been substituting defensively, and that time Oklahoma State got quick to the line before AM could get out there, adjusted, lined up, making a call. And again, flags. Guys, that's the second time tonight we've seen Oklahoma State try to go to that super tempo, but guys aren't getting lined up. I can't emphasize this enough. I mean, that's on the quarterback. You got to look around and make sure everybody is set. Yeah, I know you want to catch the defense off guard. You can't afford those five yard penalties. Fourth false start against the Cowboys tonight as Whedon looking at a third and seven. Here comes the heat. On the slant complete, struggling for extra yardage. Good, strong run by Colton Chelf. Chelf kept those legs moving, and which is that the Cowboys have converted their second straight third down. Yeah, Lucas Patterson, 77, dropped out in a fire zone, and that's just a nice job. Oak State blocking up front. We man down the middle. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. to Joseph Randall out of the backfield. A 
Dan Bailey's never missed a point after now. Make it 153 in a row. And with the strike from Whedon to Randall, Oklahoma State right back in it. Late in the first half, he found the running back all by his lonesome. Longest catch of his young career. And he gets the Cowboys back in it. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at NBUSA.com, and AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. AT&T, rethink possible. Well, it took a little while, but Oklahoma State finally got a little offense cooking. Brandon Whedon settled down, hit all six passes on the drive. The scoring pass to Randall. It's a split safety look. There's going to be a big hole in the middle of the field. The tempo catches Kyle Magan off guard. He's not able to get back into his zone. Oklahoma State able to sneak Joseph Randall out of the backfield. He runs right behind the linebacker. Pitch and catch. Big touchdown, Cowboys. Paint your chest orange like that. You need a little something to cheer about. And finally, they have something. See what happened on the last drive. The previous six drives had been next door to disaster for Dana Holgerson's offense, but Whedon got his composure back, hit all six passes, pokes back in it. An opportunity for an AM return. Cyrus Gray still on his feet. Gray up close to midfield. He'll be dragged down at the 47. A tremendous return by Cyrus Gray. Boy, talking to the Oklahoma State coaching staff, special teams, they put eight freshmen on kick coverage. They're expecting deep kicks so that these young men don't make mistakes. They got to get down there and make a play. Back in Stillwater, Duck. Thank you. Tonight's uh, AFLAC trivia question, which current Big 12 school has the longest current streak without winning or sharing a conference time? It's a question. Got the answer coming up for the AFLAC trivia question just a little bit. Stumped us. We had good guesses, though. It's second place guess. It wasn't Oklahoma or Texas. It was not. <laughs> With a great kick return by Cyrus Gray. AM has it back. Mr. Michael cuts it back and gets it to midfield. Really a balanced game so far for the AM offense. 24 runs, 22 passes. They got a lot of time here with two timeouts to get down and field to score some points. You can see the the wisdom of Mike Sherman not wanting to get in any kind of passing deal, not allowing that Oklahoma State defensive line to really pin their ears back. Johnson to throw. Hires a guard. Fuller's fighting for it. He's got the strong hands. And initially, the official right on top of it looked as if he were going to rule it incomplete. He's going to give Fuller the catch. Yeah, you know what? The drive off the ball and fighting for it in the air, helping your quarterback out. Now that, that's just fantastic work. Third and short. Michael, first down. And tackled by Johnny Thomas. Oklahoma State defensively does not see this power running game every day in practice. Defensive coordinator Bill Young said, hey, we got five true freshmen on the offensive line and the scout team. They're really big and physical, but it's tough to get a very accurate look against a pro-style offense like a &M. Side two minutes to go in the half. Johnson has some room. He closed down quickly, and Jerron picked up what he could. Or Ori Lemon stopped it. Yeah, but a successful play. I mean, you know, that Ori Lemon standing there in the middle of the field about 12 yards deep, and he's spying, he's eyeing Gerard Johnson. Gerard just got to do just what he did, hold on to the football. And AM, a &M ideally would like to score points and not give the ball back to Oklahoma State with tons of time with their explosive offense. Keep it on the ground. Michael, Woo. strong, tough run. He'll move the chains. 
the Cowboy is a little bit slow to get up. It's Moala. When Mike Sherman came here, the offensive line was nowhere near what he needed to be able to implement his offense. And he's worked at recruiting and, and, and teaching these young men how to play physical and smart up front. And him has a couple of timeouts left. We're inside a minute to go in the half. Shovel pass, scored a touchdown on this. This time it's on the ground. Fight for it. Looks as if AM got it back. They're saying it's an incomplete pass. Wow. The shovel pass is safe because of that, but it looks as if he secured this one to me. He's got to make a football move once he has possession. I agree with you, yeah, Reese. Yeah, that's a fumble. I, I think yeah. that's a catch and a fumble. It looked as though AM jumped back on it anyway. And now the clock is stopped. That's the benefit there. It stopped the clock. AM has lost the timeout by using a challenge earlier in the half, but they still have two. Sherman conserving those. Johnson have to go five backward and have a delay of game call. Take a look at this shovel pass again. Cyrus Gray, the touchdown earlier. Uh, yeah, that's a fumble. Like I mean, he turned with possession of the ball, turned up the field. His reaction too. I, mean, I know you're taught to go after the ball no matter what. It was great hustle by Evan Ike to jump on it either way. And a great play by Chris Donaldson of being there and seeing that. That's a big play. Johnson has a man. It's his tight end, Hicks. Big Nehemiah Hicks inside the 10-yard line. You know, we saw this play earlier. Remember, Jesse, we talked about, well, he threw it deep to McCoy. This time they fell back on McCoy, and underneath they had the tight end. And it's Mike Sherman staying a step ahead. We've seen some success with that power running game, pulling the guard. That's the next wrinkle. And they love Nehemiah Hicks. They say he's very smooth for a true freshman. I think he has a big future here at tight end. Michael. Twist his way down close to the five yard line here. The Aggies, one would think, and they do use one of their timeouts. Well, 20 seconds to go before halftime. Let's go back to the studio now and check in with John Saunders. Well, Reese, just a reminder coming up on the IBM halftime report, we're going to take a look at a spectacular Saturday of college football. Jim Harbaugh and the Javi has done at Stanford. Plus, Dr. Lou answers the questions of superstar LeBron James. You won't want to miss it. Coming up on the IBM Halftime Report. Reese. All right, John, okay, now, now we're going someplace for some sage counsel for LeBron. Checking in with Dr. Lou. Okay, so what Dr. Lou had NASCAR drivers last week. Mm -hmm. As you see Evan Ike, the offensive guard for the Aggies who Ike's played a heck of a game too. He's pulled and he's done a really nice job in this ball game of paving the way. And Ooh, that's one of them stingers. I, that, that's like when you make contact and you just get the stinger and you go limp up top in those shoulder area. See his left hand, mm -hmm. he's moving there. It's already a very young offensive line. They have a true freshman playing left tackle, a true sophomore playing right guard, and another sophomore playing right tackle. Evan Ike, one of those upperclassmen. One of the bell cows, really, of this offensive line. And certainly in hope that Ike's okay as he starts to sit up. We'll answer tonight's Aflac trivia question. Aflac! Which current Big 12 school has the longest current streak without winning or sharing a conference title? The Big 12 is going to change in configuration next year. The team that will remain and still looking for that title, Iowa State. Cyclones last a conference champion when they won the MVC. 1912, almost 100 years between drinks. Long time. We have. Speaking of drinks, we were. We all picked. Hey, the easy team there. The easy. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> down, all right. <laughs> down on the Brazos. We thought okay. Baylor. And we did. <laughs> uh, forgetting uh, part of the SWC that the Bears captured in 1994. And a long time waiting for some other schools too. Joe Vincenzo. Checking in at guard for Ike. 
Johnson buying time and he'll throw it away. 13 seconds remaining in the half and Johnson will have time for another shot at the end zone before you would assume they would run out the field. You know, I think Gerard Johnson had a shot there for a touchdown pass. He had a six foot four receiver and Terrence McCoy working over the middle of the field against the five foot eight cornerback Broderick Brown. That's just one of those balls you throw up in the air and let the big guy go up and, and, and bring it down. May have missed a shot there. I think Bill Young backs his defense up puts him on that goal line and forces Gerard Johnson to tuck it and try to run it in. Johnson fires. Touchdown. Jeff Fuller for the second time tonight. Very impressive drive set up by that long Cyrus Gray kickoff return. Put him in great field position, and Gerard Johnson just manages that perfectly. Watch from the outside how he drives hard to the inside. Fuller gets to the inside with the ball. Throw him open. How many times have we said that this year? Throw to where the receiver will be open. The extra point is true. Fuller with his 21st touchdown catch of his career. No Aggies ever had more. His two grabs at different. Nine ticks of the clock before halftime. Texas A&M with a 21 to 7 lead on Oklahoma State. The touchdown grab by Jeff Fuller. Rod Johnson throwing it. Johnson, Big 12 preseason offensive player of the year. He's thrown three touchdown passes tonight. After making a serious statement with a victory at Dover, reigning champion Jimmy Johnson now in second place in the Chase standings. Got his sights set on Denny Hamlin, who's the current points leader. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Kansas. ESPN Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern. Coverage begins with NASCAR Countdown at noon on ESPN2. Randall, who scored the touchdown for Oklahoma State, returning the line drive kickoff. And Whedon, if Mike Gundy so chooses, will have time for a long shot. But given the turnovers they've had, might just want to get to the locker room. Texas A&M's ability to work that two-minute drill to perfection now really has shifted momentum back in their favor. It's a lot different if you're Oklahoma State going into halftime down 14-7 rather than being down two touchdowns. Isn't that interesting, though, how quickly momentum changes? And that and that's where a veteran quarterback, an experienced player like Gerard Johnson, lifts a team up. And, and, and finally breaking down this game coming in, you, you know, I was leaning towards a, an experienced, proven quarterback. He showed right there what, he, what his value is to this team. See Johnson's numbers. They've been solid despite... Aggie's turning it over a couple of times. The kneel down will not be popular with the orange clad faithful here in Stillwater, but the percentage play, given the fact that Gundy's team has had a little bit of trouble hanging on with the ball. You see Johnson stopped short there, perhaps something flying. Uh, let's check in with Jim Brown. Coach, they put a lot of pressure on your quarterback. How do you clean that up going into the second half? Well, we've got to do a better job of adjusting to the blitzes. We think we know where it's coming from, so we got to get that cleaned up and then just execute our offense. Now, defensively, you, you have offensively, excuse me, you guys scored there right at the late, right. but they answered back. That's right. You know, how do you carry that momentum into the second half? Well, we have to tackle better and play better assignment football on defense. We put them in the bad situation on the defensive side a couple times. We just have to tackle better, relax, come out, move the ball on the first drive. All right, coach, thanks. Oklahoma State will have that opportunity as Mike Gundy goes for his 40th win. His career as the head coach at Oklahoma State. 21 7. Aggies have the lead at the break. Let's join John Saunders now for the IBM halftime. Welcome back to Tailgate Week. Fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Just about to start the third quarter. It has been a good first half for Texas A&M. The Aggies taking advantage of Oklahoma State turnovers. Together a drive late in the half. They lead by two touchdowns. But the Cowboys all dressed in black, hoping to come back in the second half. They'll get the ball first. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Browns down on the field. Texas A&M, good first half. Really can't afford to be too comfortable against this offense. They better not be. Mike Sherman's telling his guys in the locker room, guys, this team has 16 scoring drives of less than two minutes. 
They're explosive. We talk about good teams. When they have their opponents down, they put that foot on the throat. We talked about AM being able to survive a hostile environment early. Well, they're up two touchdowns in the first half. You've got to keep that foot down now, finish this thing. AM also able to survive a couple of first half turnovers, a couple of interceptions thrown by Gerard Johnson. And the Aggies will kick it away in Oklahoma State. It's had its offense sputter for most of the first half. We'll get the ball first to start the second. Third quarter underway in Stillwater. It is Justin Gilbert on the return. Gilbert outstanding speed dragged down at the 27. Time to look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. Let's kind of play off what Mike Gundy said going in at halftime to Jim Brown. We have to figure out the blitz. We think we have. Now we'll find out whether or not Wheaton has figured it out. Well, those blitzes have been confusing Wheaton. They got him a couple times on corner blitzes. Oklahoma State, in my opinion, has had their best success when they've gone super fast tempo. They've got to get lined up properly, but they have a chance to score fast. Kendall Hunter. Been very quiet for much of the night. It's hit almost immediately. It's an AM defense that has been so impressive tonight, stopping the run. They came into the game giving up only 2.2 yards of carry, and this is an all American caliber back. They're shutting down right now. And in Whedon, throw underneath, and as his man complete. Making the grab is Tracy Moore, his first catch of the night. There is a flag down in the backfield as well. Rushing the passer, defense number 40. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, it's unnecessary. Von Miller there, 40. Last week had, had six hits on the quarterback, not sacks. Felt like he could get in the head of a quarterback just by being around him. He's got to pull up on that one. You can tell he's probably a little frustrated. Almost 330 snaps now since his last sack. He led the country last year with 17. Hunter almost popped loose, and Kendall gets inside the 40 yard line. Michael Hodges on the stop. I have been impressed with Brandon Whedon in the sense that three early turnovers, but he's been able to put those behind him. That last drive, they scored a touchdown before the half. Hunter. First down. Well, he pushed out of bounds by Trent Hunter. You know, one of the things that Whedon told us, he would rely on his baseball expertise. He was a pitcher in the minor leagues for five years. He said, you know, you give up a home run ball, you get bombed in the first inning, and your team's sort of looking to you to settle down. He's so done far, that. Yes, yeah. Wheaton down the middle a little bit high and almost intercepted by Trent Hunter. Here is Brandon Wheaton, who, when he came out of high school, was the first pick by the New York Yankees in 2002. It was in the second round, but it was the Yankees' first pick. Brandon would bring that heater up there at about 97, but never really worked out in baseball. Sub 500 record. ERA was around five. He was a minor league all star one year and trying his hand at football. Tremendous catch. Josh Cooper was able to haul in that fastball behind him and move the change for the post. All right, now we've seen a couple of. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number 87, 15 yard penalty, it'll be first and 10. Now, I didn't see what Tracy Moore did. But it is a costly penalty. Yeah, absolutely. But we're seeing now some individual effort pulling the Cowboys offense and team together. An outstanding focus. We're sending Kendall Hunter run the ball. Cooper there with that catch, picking his team up. It's been a nice response by this Oklahoma State offense on the first drive of the second half. Whedon. Justin Blackman. 
He gets it back down close to the 25-yard line. Oklahoma State right now, Craig, doing a nice job getting their best players on offense to football. We've seen Kendall Hunter now in a couple touches. Now you got Justin Blackman going. Dean Blackman leads the nation in receiving yards. Hasn't had a big one yet tonight. Hunter with a short gain on the right side. Andre Moore with the stop. We're seeing this Oklahoma State offense with a little more authority to them. You know, you're seeing Whedon. They did pick up one blitz on the pass across the middle of the field, so maybe the Aggies getting a little more reluctant right down here. Getting close to the red zone. Whedon's got company and just throws it out what he hoped was a green spot. Closest man to it was Sean Porter of A&M. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it's a standard 3-4 <laughs> yeah, defense. How do you let the big man Mathis that weighs 285 come clean without hitting him? That'll bring up a second down and 10. Oklahoma State about to snap it for the 10th time on this drive. Folks could use a touchdown here after AM got one late in the first half. False start, offense, number 87. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, that's two penalties on the drive. One personal foul for Tracy Moore, now a false start. It's their third false start penalty. Those mental errors, those dead ball errors that just drive head coaches crazy. Brings up a second and 15. Pick up the pressure nicely. Well thrown ball by Whedon, and Bo Bowling has it. Bowling's down just inside the 15. All right, here's an Aggie now. They're, they're going to drop out and try to follow the route. He's got route identification, right? He's trying to find that crossing receiver, doesn't get him, so it comes clean and open. Dana Holderson's starting to figure something out now. There are holes over the middle of the field, even with those robbers, and they're taking advantage of it right now. Third down and two. Whedon. Anium has the first down. Anium still on his feet inside the five. An excellent opening drive to the second half. Hunter stopped just short of the goal line. If there's been one weakness for the Cowboy offense this year, it's been short yardage or goal line. They're, they're not accustomed to getting under center and just playing power football. I've always believed that is a real weak link to this offense. They're in the pistol formation now. This is the new in thing in college football. Tailback right behind the quarterback. Hunter has it out of the pistol. And Pistol Pete will celebrate a touchdown. Hunter with his seventh touchdown of the season, capping a 13-play, 73-yard drive. And Oklahoma State with an impressive opening drive in the third quarter. Previous play is under further review. That's well, not popular here and looking to see if Hunter crossed the goal line before he went down. See if you can see when his knee touches where the ball is. Looks like the ball's crossed the plane to me before the knee goes down. That's a that's a score. Give him six. What an impressive answer by Oklahoma State offensively after tech uh, or sorry by Oklahoma State offensively after an AM had just scored before the half 
they come right back out. That's two touchdowns now on their last two drives. So this Cowboy offense is starting to pick it up. That pistol offense is so popular. Chris Alt out at Nevada, he's the one that originated it, and now they're coming around the country using it. It forces the defense to stay balanced. It lets the tailback behind the quarterback get down the hill quick. But UCLA have almost 260 rushing yards behind the pistol offense against Texas and a big win on the road. And, and look at Nevada with their offense. Yes, they did. Look at Nevada, 25th in the country ranked team. I mean, they've Chris Salt's got something everybody's liking. Well, they ripped Cal with that pistol offense in Nevada. UCLA didn't even have to throw it. <laughs> Threw it eight times. 20-something <laughs> yards. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So as expected, Kendall Hunter gets the touchdown. With the extra point, Dan Bailey, who's never missed one, will have a seven point game again. It's up and it's through, and the Cowboys do exactly what's needed to open the third quarter. Now, Gerard Johnson and the Aggies will have a Welcome back to College Football Primetime on ESPN, served by Applebee's. Thursday night in the Big 12, Oklahoma State just opened the second half with a touchdown drive. Both Texas A&M and the Cowboys undefeated, but unproven so far. Starting the conference test tonight, that answer by the Cowboys got a good one cooking up here in Stillwater. Rod Johnson will have his first opportunity of the second half to answer. Johnson threw three touchdown passes in the first half. Quinn Sharp drives it into the end zone as is his custom Aggie start on the 20 as we go to John Saunders. Felicia's time now for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. It's Mark Ingram of Alabama. 24 carries for 157 yards and two touchdowns, including the game winner in that 24-20 win against Arkansas. Also had two receptions for 27 yards. If you'd like to get involved, text the word vote to 345-345 and win a chance for a trip to the national championship. John, the owner of the stiff arm statue, delivered quite a stiff arm in that run against Arkansas. The pre snap penalty. False start. Offense. Number 61. Five yard penalty. First down. We were just talking about the pistol offense. How about the effect that's had on Alabama this year with Mark Ingram? 14 carries out of the pistol this year. He's averaging 15 yards a run. I think he likes it. I think Florida better have something ready for that defensively. They see him put the holster on. You better get somebody else in there. Yeah. <laughs> Two backs behind Gerard Johnson. Pressure coming. Down he goes. You go to NASA. This is just a coverage sack here on the back side. There's no way that the freshman Jokel can hang on. Really good job of him holding on to that football. And you're asking a lot of a true freshman left tackle to have to deal with a senior. You go Chinasa. What more could he have done tonight? He's got a big interception. He's got pressure now on the quarterback. He's had an all-star caliber game. Second and 20. Underneath the swoop. He takes a big hit, and when the Cowboys deliver a big hit, it's usually number 10, Markel Martin. And it was again. And now Bill Young's defense, when they have a chance to be the aggressor, they're going to sit back now and keep it under and force the punt. Just a smart defensive football team. Johnson needs 10, fires a dart and gets that and more. First down, Aggies. Good grab by Uzoma Wachaku. You know, I just have 
the feeling. Gerard Johnson, is, we've talked about it all night. Major confidence thrown to the outside of the field, but he's got bigger, more physical receivers than the, the secondary for Oklahoma State. He's got two guys that are six foot four. Chinaz is over six feet tall. These guys can come back to the football and fight for it to get those tough catches. Man down is the man on the coverage, Broderick Brown. Brown's a sophomore from Houston. Mm. But I think, Jesse, you, the, the key word that you used there is come back and compete for the football. We didn't see that in those first three games by the receivers of the Aggies. And working on the right leg of Brown, we'll check on his condition and take a break from Stillwater. Back here in Stillwater, Texas A&M holding on to a 21-14 lead against Oklahoma State. Aggies just converted a third down and 10. Broderick Brown was on the coverage on the play. He has eight solo tackles from his cornerback position tonight. He's left the game momentarily after being shaken up. Justin Gilbert, the freshman, number four, who's been returning kicks tonight, will replace him. Aggies on the ground with Michael. Not much there. Gerard Johnson has really responded well after throwing four interceptions against FIU. Head coach Mike Sherman told us he's never coached a quarterback, college or pro, that thinks more about football constantly than Gerard Johnson. He needs to be thinking more about girls, he told us. Look at yourself a girlfriend. <laughs> that was not my problem, by the way. I, I did not have that problem. <laughs> I've even heard rumors that girls lined up just to have you give them a flower. <laughs> Against their will. Johnson firing deep and he'll throw it away. You know, Johnson has sort of been raised almost from birth to be an Aggie. His father was a wide receiver at Texas A&M. And Gerard used to go to high school wearing Texas A&M gear. He, he dreamed of leading this team, and it's always been something that he's taken very seriously, both of his parents, his late father and his mother, coaches and educators, and they've sort of instilled a serious nature in the quarterback. All right, there's, there's, there's that freshman out there, true freshman corner. Close snap. Johnson corrals it. That ought to be a hole on the outside. <laughs> Got him anyway. Ori Lemon was coming. It looked as if Jokel had him all wrapped up. No flag, but they do get to the quarterback, and the Aggies will have to give it up. The Aggies do get back left guard. Evan Ike, he's in there, but this is another coverage sack. Once the ball is down at the ankles, the timing's off. The eyes are off the down the field. Big stop by the defense. Now you're giving the football back to your O. Again, they've scored 14 points on their last two possessions. They're feeling it right now. Great chance to get back in this game. Gilbert, who checked in a corner, will return the punt. This gets it away. Gilbert hit immediately and it bounced on the ground and fortunately for the freshman hopped right back to him. Oh I tell you what you talk about old Mo being on your bench right now. This right here the freshman can't quite bring it in the ball right back to his stomach. Uh, it's the beauty of being a true freshman. You think you can make every play and win the Heisman Trophy in your fourth game. Just got to relax. <laughs> You're in this game. Take it easy. The sound you heard was an audible exhale from the crowd here at Boone Pickens Stadium. Probably from Mike Gundy. So Brandon Whedon has it back. Kendall Hunter. Not a lot of running room again. You know, I'm amazed the head coach Mike Gundy has been able to stay out of this offense completely. I mean, he's got an ego. He's an offensive mind. And he goes out and he hires Dana Holgerson, and he's not been in this offense, hasn't been in their business one bit this year. Matter of fact, even goes down on the defensive side and helps the scout team offensive line during practice. Whedon gets rid of it, completes it to Moore. Moore is going to be marked out of bounds at a, about the 37-yard line. And, you know, Especially when you consider the fact with Gundy that three of the top seven offenses in school history have come under his, on his watch. Yeah. But he said he thought that this offense is necessary to compete in this conference. 
Hunter picks up the first down. The biggest difference in the offense in the one last year with Zach Robinson running a, a lot more quarterback runs, more option look. This is more in the Houston, Texas Tech genre. Of Zach Robinson won a lot of games and pulled him out of slumps with his legs. Zach Robinson was a competitor, a senior guy with his legs that really opened up offenses in the past year. Whedon, Blackman, and Justin slips one and gets up close to midfield and the nation's number one offense in total yards starting to roll. And you see they're able to get playmakers the football in space. That's the beauty of this offense designed by Mike Leach and Hal Mummy. Dana Horgers is now taking it to the next level. It's the ultimate equalizer in college football. Hunter, first down. Michael Hodges on the stop for the act. I think what we're seeing here now is that Holgerson has done a little adjustment and the offense has to Tim DeRuiter, who had him in the first half. And they're only rushing four right now at AM. They're, they're not putting that same amount of pressure at the point of attack as they were in the first half. Weeden on first down, steps up in the pocket nicely. A dart to Blackman for the first down. Four-man rush again, and the offensive line, Oak State, keeping them out. Watch true freshman running back Joseph Randall. He's going to get a chip on Von Miller. They get the double team, and that's something Miller's, Miller's going to remember now. Those chips, they hurt coming off the edge. Whedon has been going to his primary target, Blackman. To this drive jump started. Also, Randall had a touchdown in the first half. The freshman is inside the 30. You take a look at the number of yards that the Pokes have been able to put up this season. 722 against Tulsa. That's an Oklahoma State record. Twice this season, they've scored more than 60 points. They've done that just 16 times in their entire history before this year. Whedon. Wide open is Blackman. Justin Blackman, touchdown Oklahoma State. After a shaky start for Brandon Whedon, he certainly found his rhythm. And I don't know if Blackman's a Heisman candidate, but he's looking like a Bolitnikoff guy in this half. As you see, an Aggie who was shaken up on the touchdown play, Stephen Terrell, a sophomore safety, is down on the ground for Texas A&M. Mike Gundy said they had to go in and figure out how to slow down and stop the blitz. Now, this particular time, watch the linebacker level crossing and how late they are. They're a non-factor. That's two guys taken out of coverage, not even putting pressure on the quarterback. And again, a big hole in the middle of that Aggie secondary. The beauty of having a 26-year-old quarterback is that he has a calming influence on his football team. Even after taking sacks, fumbling the football, throwing interceptions, he's been able to regroup and lead this offense down the field to score points. Really showing his maturity here. That's been huge for this football team tonight. Look at the last 17 passes by the 26 year old who by the way will turn 27 in a couple of weeks. He's at 15 of them nearly 200 yards a couple of touchdowns. And Blackman who is the nation's leading scorer gets on the board. And the Aggie was shaking up Terrell is walking off. And we're an extra point away from the tie game. Terrell, one of the leaders in the secondary, still looks a little bit woozy as he heads past his head coach Mike Sherman into the Aggie bench. And it looked a little shaky for a while for the Pokes' new style offense. Whistles go off before Dan Bailey poked through the extra point. Probably the snap. 
football start. Kicking team, number 92. Five yard penalty, replay the try. And it has been a more than minor annoyance to Mike Gundy, usually his offense, who committed five false starts tonight. This time it's on the extra point team, so Bailey will try it from his 15, trying to tie this game at 21. Still perfect. We got more laundry on the field. Brandon Whedon to Justin Blackman. He wanted an offensive shootout, and we may very well have it here. Blackman feeling his oats as Oklahoma State has rallied from two touchdowns behind at the break, and they've locked it up at 21. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And John Hancock, the future is yours. Kings for tailgate week. We've got, we got one cooking up in Stillwater. Oklahoma State scored a couple of touchdowns. They tied it up at 21. A good play for one side, bad for the other. Charles McMillan, that's the defensive back coach for Texas A&M. Our mics picked him up, telling Dustin Harris, that is your man. You are trying to do something completely different than the coverage we were in. And that's the problem you and I have with each other right now. You're yeah. not doing your job. But you know what I like? What Dustin you, Harris You mean said? you and me or Charles <laughs> and Dustin? <laughs> Charles and him. Oh, okay. I love you, Reese. Okay. Right. You, you know what I like? What Dustin Harris, the quarterback, said back to him at the end? Hey, I'm going to make up. To, I'm going to make it up to you, Coach. Yep. Aggie offense have an opportunity to make it up, though not on this kick return. We'll start on the 20, yet another touchback off the foot of Quinn Sharp. Saturday Night Football on ABC. This is going to be a tremendous matchup in the Pac-10. Andrew Luck and Stanford, LaMichael James, Kenyon Barner, and all of those speedy ducks. Number four, Oregon. Austin Stadium is going to be rocking. Luck showing off the wheels, too. Saturday night, 8 o'clock on ESPN. He won't be showing off wheels. He'll be showing off the arm and how physical a football team Stanford is. That's what impresses me the most about the Stanford. Let me clarify, game on ABC, though some will see it on ESPN2. Notre Dame and Boston College also available on ABC in some areas. 21 all time, first pass after the touchdown from Oklahoma State. Johnson was looking for Wachiku and he couldn't hold it. Mike Sherman talked to his team this week about being able to overcome adversity. Hark back and used Alabama as an example last weekend in the fourth quarter on the road at Arkansas. We'll find out if they have it right now. Focus, finishing plays, drop passes on first, creating second and ten. Bill Young loves that. Johnson again to the outside. Another completion swoke with the grab. Now we've seen this route three different times. Two that have gone to the deeper route and one to the tight end coming under. Beautiful throw. This is a big time throw. Gerard Johnson able to step up. He throws the B ball just over top of the defender, tiptoeing on the sidelines. Get it on the ground with Michael. Gets across the 35. Two different styles of offenses, but both very effective at getting the ball down the field. Oklahoma State's now alive. Now it's up to execution, and running on first down has to be up plus. You know, yeah, the Craig, I was just going to say, all of a sudden, this is turning into the duel we anticipated for both these quarterbacks, Gerard Johnson and Brandon Weed. They're both playing the lights out right now. Johnson going to run. It's been a while since Gerard carried one. And get up to the 45 and move the sticks. I've said all along, the ability to run the quarterback, and especially Gerard Johnson, has opened him up as a player. We look at Terrell Pryor at Ohio State, Cam Newton at Auburn, Gerard Johnson, another big physical quarterback, 6'5", 250. What about that guy, that little guy, Denard Robinson? Yeah, he's a little different because <laughs> he still hasn't been tackled. Johnson showing off that arm to the outside. Diving to make the catch. Watch a coup. 
And Zoma's had a couple of nice grabs tonight, hadn't he, though? I mean, he really has. And the way they drive back to the football, watch, he doesn't lose his feet. See how he kept his feet and legs with him? Gerard Johnson puts that football the only place his wide receiver can make the catch. Johnson just needed two for the first down, and he got it. And watch, watch a coup with another grab. Gets to the 40. What a nice job of being patient by Gerard Johnson. Watching the coverage as he looks. The hook route just on the inside. He's patient until the linebacker clears out to the flat. Kristen Michael bursting through the hole. Pick up about three. Well, Gerard Johnson was over there picking on senior cornerback Andrew McGee. Andrew McGee had to just come off the field because he needed some air. They were quick to rush Broderick Brown back on the field to take his spot getting worn out over on that side of the field. Aggies try to answer the two touchdowns in the second half from the Cowboys. Michael with the catch. Chanasa with the stop along with Markel Martin. It'll bring up third down. Kristen Michael three straight hundred yard games coming in here shows you how powerful he is to get you the third and short. Mike Sherman says he's the most violent runner they have. And if you see that when you're watching. Going to throw it for the short yardage. Swope can't handle it. The second Ryan reacted as if it were a backward pass but incomplete pass the call and earlier in his own end we saw Mike Sherman go for it on fourth down with the quarterback sneak. We look at this play. What do you think about the call? Well, let's just make sure this is a lateral first off. It looks to me like from that angle, I'm not so sure that. Close. But that play is designed, Reese, to answer your question. It's like a toss sweep. You have to lead the back, though, and it's a good call. It's an easy first down if he leads the receiver. Michael hit almost immediately, and the Aggies had converted twice on fourth down tonight, but this time, it looks as if the Cowboys have stuffed them. James Thomas, Chanasa, Pokes have it back. Evan Ike, the left guard's going to pull and come around, but they get collapsed and beat play side. Beautiful job play side of Moala coming in. Now remember, Moala's replacing the starter, Justin Gent. So he stepped his game up here tonight. Moala has been all over the field defensively for Bill Young's group. They come up with a play and Pokes have it back on O. Hunter trying to find the corner and cannot. All right, old Cowboys defense. Bill Young had him out there. They stepped up, answered the bell. In Oklahoma State has been devastatingly efficient in the third quarters. We head down toward two and a half minutes to go in the third. Rallying from two touchdowns behind. Brandon Whedon has found a lot of success in the middle of the field, but this time did not connect with Tracy Moore. Now this is a big play here for Texas A&M. They have to stop the bleeding. They've given up two touchdowns now on two consecutive possessions. Get some of that momentum back. Get the ball back in Gerard Johnson's hands. Folks, four for nine on third down tonight. Tried to sneak it through with a running play, but Kendall Hunter's going to be stopped short. Garrick Williams and Michael Hodges. Hey, and man, does that tell you something about Dana Holgerson's confidence in Kendall Hunter on third and long? This is not just a spread them out, pass happy offense. 48% of the calls this year have been the run, and he almost made it. Well, the offensive players wanted to go for it. The <laughs> yeah. crowd wanted to go for you it. You always want to go for it, Reese. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, <laughs> Coach once told me, he said, your decision is on third down. It's mine on fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Snap almost got over Sharp's head. Did a good job to get the punt away. And a short return, Aggies will have it back just across their own 20-yard line. 
celebrating its six years sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All state makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All state has contributed more than two point two million dollars in scholarship money. And the Aggies just answered right Jesse that defense they stepped up. Just over a minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. This is a way to get your Big 12 schedule rolling. For both the Aggies and the Cowboys. 21 all in Stillwater. Gerard Johnson has a man. He underthrows it and is picked off. Andrew McGee. Gerard Johnson severely underthrows this ball. This might have been a touchdown for Texas A&M. Johnson's able to get the football out front. It just comes out ugly. Gets caught up in the wind. Yet Terrence McCoy behind coverage wide open. Yeah, but I think Rashetti Jones really did a nice job of exploding to Gerard Johnson, making him throw quickly and with bad rhythm and timing and underthrow. Johnson has now thrown seven interceptions in his last two games. Wheaton, we try to answer. Blackman has it. Cowboys on the move again. We saw two different times in the first half. Corner blitz get to Wheaton and cause a problem for him. But now coming off the corner, it's late getting to Wheaton and the throw down the field. Wheaton took a big shot by Dustin Harris, but great anticipation on the throw. Wheaton again, dangerous pass. He was looking for Bo Bowling. Stephen Terrell back into the game, broke it up. It's one thing to be confident throwing footballs over the middle of the field, but you better throw those with conviction. He'll find out soon enough. Big 12 play. Don't lob balls down deep over the middle of the field. Just seems like that with the Aggies defense, the timing of their blitzes, they're late and they're allowing one on one down the secondary. The crowd reacting. They wanted the interference call on Terrell. None coming. Wheaton complete. Bowling has this one. Bow inside the 20-yard line, and he might have enough for another first down. I think one of the reasons those blitzes are late is because Oklahoma State's been able to A, pick up the tempo, and B, they're getting the football out of Wheaton's hands much quicker in the second half. Quick snap, pressure coming. Miller was on him, but Blackman's got it. <laughs> This is an internal clock change and adjustment by Brandon Wheaton. And this half, he now feels the timing and the pressure coming from the corner and is getting rid of the football. That is the cornerback, Dustin Harris, who is down for the Aggies. The training staff coming out to attend to him. And this has been a complete reversal in fortune from what we saw in the early part of the game. Brandon Whedon, I think, has only thrown three incompletions now. I think in his last 20 attempts. I mean, he's on absolute fire right now. The first half, the pressure was getting to him. He looked confused. He hadn't yet found his rhythm. But he's really been able to buckle down here as the game's progressed. Which is what, if you're a coach, you're looking for. Can the guy make the adjustment? The Aggies did not know whether or not Whedon could. They didn't think he would make the mental and physical adjustments in the pocket. He's done that here in the second half. His receivers are one-on-one. -on -one. Now, remember, these receivers are pretty explosive. Twelve different receivers with a catch of at least 17 yards. So they're used to getting down the field. He's really grown up in the second half in terms of his development as a quarterback. Remember, the only action he's ever gotten was against a half against Colorado last year. And then, of course, they started this season. He played three opponents, Tulsa, Troy, and Washington State, that, that no offense, but aren't great caliber defenses. And Troy's the only game he had to finish. The other yeah. two, he was out of there before the end. And now he's got his team first and goal, trying to take the lead. Kendall Hunter. Buys a little running room. Touchdown. For the first.
first time tonight, Oklahoma State has the lead. Violent, quick, aggressive cuts. There's no way that there. Barry Sanders made those cuts here at his home field. That's how that's how explosive Kendall Hunter is. Now, does he knee down before the ball crosses? Interesting. We're gonna look at this. Take another look. Well, ruling on the field, touchdown. There was some hesitation before the touchdown call came. He was stretching it. Body is in, but from that other angle, it was tough to see. Perhaps he went down before the ball was crossed into the end zone. The question is whether that ball crossed the plane in the middle of his dive. Indisputable. Here's a great shot. Knees down. Remember, only a part of the ball just has to cross the front of that plane. That's all that they need. I think a part of the ball may have crossed it earlier. Right around here, I think the ball might be over. Okay, but but if you're an official right now and you're looking at this review, you have to assume that ball's over. You know, you, there's nothing that's that's conclusive. There, conclusive yeah. to, to turn to turn the call. You know, it, it's so big for this offense having a healthy Kendall Hunter back. Last year, only 382 rushing yards. He had an ankle injury that really slowed him down after being a first-team All-America back in 2008. But you see the impact he can have on this offense when he's healthy. Because the defense was there. I mean, the, yeah. the, the corner came up, was in his spot, but he still was one-on-one -on -one in space. Great athletes. That's why Kendall Hunter likes this offense so much. That's why, that's why Dana Holgerson likes running the football more this year. <laughs> Dana said he's never had a guy like that. He, he had some talented guys, Bryce Bell, Charles Sims mm -hmm. at Houston, but those guys, more space guys, and though Hunter's not the biggest guy in the world, he is explosive, he's strong. Deceptively powerful for a running back that's five foot eight and listed at 200 pounds. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. When the officials use that verbiage, it means what we suspected, not enough to overturn the call. So Oklahoma State twice is trailed by 14 points, and they have their first lead of the night. Bailey for the extra point. Oklahoma State has outscored AM 21 0 in the third quarter. They're up by seven as we check in with John Saunders. Well, it's time now for a Sports Center right now, brought to you by Keystone Light. The San Francisco Giants beat Arizona today to clinch a share of the National League West because the Padres lost to the Cubs 1 0. So only three games left in the West, and the Giants need just one win to wrap that up also right now you can see the Padres trailing the Braves by two games the Braves did not play today that in the National League wild card sports centers on ESPN news right now all right John and Oklahoma State getting the workout is not exactly the Oregon Duck workout <laughs> not yet though though it has been for much of this season for Oklahoma State and now in the third quarter they're, they're looking like what are we doing <laughs> that's the road battle right <laughs> 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 Another touchback, Texas A&M. In the final seconds of the third quarter, we'll get it. Trailing by seven now. You guys have gone around at the different stops we've had on Thursday night and looked for the unique workout. Is that the toughest one yet? Easily. That that took the heart rate to about 170. You go three different sets of 30 seconds each, and there are different little things that you do through it there. And I'm telling you, it's just like whoo. These things are called battle ropes for a reason. Forearms, arms, your lats, your shoulders. Eating food hurt last night. Rob Glass, he was my strength coach when I was at Florida. He got payback on me yesterday. <laughs> on you? What about me? Man, I didn't even do anything wrong at Florida. It wasn't so much what he did in Florida. It was, Jesse had, had said to Rob's wife that perhaps he had gotten a little bit soft. He's softer now 
than he was at Florida. And and Rob wanted to show you in no uncertain terms that that's not the case. He's one of the best strength coaches in the entire business, and he proved to Craig and I yesterday that he still has that intensity. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma State has shown some strength, some resolve, and plenty of intensity in an explosive third quarter. Cowboys up by seven, fourth quarter coming up. Sherman keeps talking about maturity. How are you going to handle it when things go badly on the road? Went very badly in the third quarter for the Aggies. 21 nothing in the quarter. Oklahoma State a seven point lead as we head to the fourth. Hey, don't forget the Ryder Cup returns to ESPN tonight. The top players teeing off in Wales. Tiger and Phil lead an American team facing pressure to repeat. The favored Europeans led by Lee Westwood and Rory McElroy. Look to reclaim the Ryder Cup day one 2010 Ryder Cup live 2:30 a.m. Eastern time. Where you can see the replay as John Saunders will. ESPN two Friday at one Eastern. First play of the fourth quarter, Gerard Johnson going deep to Terrence McCoy. It's incomplete. Very curious now to see how Gerard Johnson responds after throwing a very bad interception. Here's a young team that's looking to their leader on the road in a hostile environment down in the fourth quarter. How does their leader respond? I think it comes up to that offensive line. They've got to give him protection, and they've got to have success on first down. This third and eight's not going to work against the Cowboys defense. Pistol Pete whipping up the crowd. And the flags fly. Signal for the false start coming from the far side. Proud of the snap. False start. Offense. Number 76. Five yard penalty. Third down. And that's the freshman Jokel. And Craig, if you thought third and eight was bad, third and 13 is even worse. Yes, sir, it is. And the crowd's gotten into it, you know, so now that defense, the crowd feel young, very smart. They're going to keep them in front. You want to talk about fans being on top of you? Here at this stadium, there is no space. Trust me, it's loud on the field. Johnson in the middle. Woo -hoo. Grab by Wachaku. He's worth watching. First down, Aggies. That answers your question, Jesse. What's Gerard Johnson going to do? That's twice now in this half on third and long. Gerard Johnson has delivered with strikes down the field. But why did he get to do it? Protection. Great protection. Here's a quarterback who has thrown seven interceptions in his last five quarters, but the fourth quarter has been the Aggies. I'm looking for Tannehill. It's incomplete. In fact, in Texas A&M's last game against Florida International, they entered the fourth quarter after Johnson had thrown four picks in the third, trailing by two touchdowns. They put three scores on the board and sort of escaped. And Mike Sherman said it was a great teaching moment for his team. It was critical to win the game. You'd love to blow out a team like that, but the teaching moment that they could overcome some adversity. And they've got it. A big old bucket full of adversity here in Stillwater tonight. Mr. Michael, not much. Chris Donaldson on the stop. Lack of execution on first down. Then on second down, you got to play where you're supposed to have a little cut back there. You, you, you've got a good play on. Craig, I was just going to say, they've been great on third down tonight. They're 8 for 16, but the biggest reason why is because they've been able to run the ball on first and second down. for eight got a man out there he needed eight yards so he found number eight to get more than that Jeff Fuller with the grab and the Aggies move the chains 
buying time with his feet and an arm strong enough to make the throw, knowing where the receiver's going to. He throws the football under duress, and that's the second time tonight Jeff Fuller has gone up and high-pointed the football over top of a smaller defender, showing great hand strength. You know, I, I just, I, I think back to the conversation Mike Sherman said he had with Jeff Fuller's dad. And they talked about what do you have to do to get to the next level. And Mike said, you know, the dad and Jeff, they all talked about it and just said, hey, you know, be stronger with your hands, compete with the ball, do all the little things. So Ori Lemon, the linebacker, who was down. Reese, you had asked Gerard Johnson earlier in the week, who's his go-to guy on third down? And he said right away, it's Jeff Fuller. The guy can run routes, he can make plays. If I'm in a tough spot, I'm looking for my buddy outside number eight. He's done that on several occasions tonight. When he's needed a play, these two have been on the same page. Both of these guys, Aggie legacies, their fathers both played at Texas A&M, steeped in the maroon tradition, and teaming up to convert a big third down there for A&M. Johnson again to the outside. Complete. Fuller has it again, and the Aggies now on the move. Backfield pass protection, stepping up, giving the time, and a strong route, driving the defender off. Every time tonight, Gerard Johnson has had a matchup outside that he's favored. He's gone that way. He has not missed a throw to the perimeter of the field yet. Another Cowboy down on the play. It's Andrew McGee. Very physical game here. These two teams extremely competitive, knowing first conference, all the, all the things at stake here on the pride. Well, Big 12 South Division battle, and you cannot afford to lose this game early in the year because, in essence, you go down two games to your opponent. It's a two-game disadvantage if you lose tonight. That's the stakes tonight if you're Oklahoma State or Texas A&M. This is big. Of course, the top two teams listed here, Texas and Oklahoma, square off in the Red River rivalry on Saturday. And Texas certainly has shown some vulnerability. Oklahoma has won three of its four games by seven points or fewer. I don't know if there's really an opportunity for a dark horse, but certainly the winner tonight will believe that it has a chance. This division is a lot more open here in week five than it, we probably anticipated it being at the start of the year. And I think we find out about Texas Tech this week. They've been off. They got beat. Now they're going to Iowa State. Very important game for them to see if they might be a Cinderella for the South. And that's the beauty of these type of games early in the year. We find out who the contenders are and who the pretenders are. So McGee making his way to the sideline. Aggies on the move, trying to tie the game. And Whedon looks on. Johnson trying to answer Whedon's huge third quarter. Quick pass, Fuller! Had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. First down again, not a successful play. Again, second and 10. These Oklahoma State corners are getting eaten alive on the outside of the field. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, at some point may want to think about bracketing that coverage with safety help. The only issue is if you do that, then you can't bring as many guys in pressure if you're trying to get after the quarterback. Johnson has company in the backfield, puts it on the ground, and Oklahoma State had it, and now they're going the other way. Cowboys on their way. James Thomas, touchdown. Texas A&M had nine turnovers in the last two football games. Now at four, Jamie Black, number 50, defensive end, stays at home and is an athletic defensive end to make the play. Gerard Johnson, very sloppy with the ball carriage there, waving it around like a loaf of bread. It gets popped out loose, and that's costly. A devastating turnover for the Aggies. And the Cowboys, who twice tonight have been two touchdowns behind, now lead it by two touchdowns. 
four turnovers for Johnson tonight, but he's got time to atone. But this one is going to sting as James Thomas caps off 28 unanswered for the Pokes. The Sea of Orange is alive. Momentum on Oklahoma State's side after James Thomas just scooped up a Gerard Johnson fumble, took it 63 yards, and Johnson has nine turnovers in his last two games, seven picks, two fumbles lost, four of those turnovers coming here tonight against the Cowboys, and now the Aggies are in dire straits, trailing by 14. Another kickoff, another touchback. In the early moments of this game, starting linebacker for Oklahoma State, Justin Gent, collided with Thomas, who just scored a touchdown and pretty much knocked himself out. He was down on the ground for a while. Now, Gent is back on the sideline. You know, you know what Justin's doing? He's looking for his helmet. He, he wants to be back out in the middle of all of this. And he's looking at every drawer. They, they stole that thing away. They're not going to let 42 back in there, and he might be resigned to that fact now. But every now and then, he'll slip away and look for that helmet. And that Oklahoma State defense has certainly picked it up for Justin. Johnson answers his fumble with a quick completion to Kenrick McNeil. The Aggies have a first down. Uh, Craig, you and I watched live last year as Gerard Johnson threw for 342 yards and four touchdown passes against Texas. It was one of the best performances for a quarterback in the entire 2009 season. He can get it done. Johnson started right, came back left. McNeil with the second straight catch. I'm going to go back to and, and talk to you about what drives coaches crazy. That last series on first and ten, Fuller drops a ball that he never drops. On second down, disaster happens. Capitalizing on your chances, right? Got to finish plays. You got to make them and not drop balls when there's a chance to make the play. Johnson on the move. He's got another completion. Big freshman tight end, Nehemiah Hicks. Jen Moore, Jim Brown has been down there watching Justin Jett try to try to find his headgears. He had any luck, Jen? <laughs> That's right, Reese. I've been standing down here on the sideline watching him go back and forth. I saw the equipment trainer, a manager, take his helmet shortly after he came off the field. He's gone back and forth no less than 12 times looking for that thing. to be in the middle of this with Johnson with Tannehill makes the grab Oklahoma State now defensively laying off playing big zones they're going to force Texas A&M to have to drive the field up two scores well with as much time's on the clock you know what that's not that's not something that A&M should panic over just take it eight seven nine go got a second and one here and they're already inside the Oklahoma State 35. Cyrus Gray in reverse. It'll bring up a third down. Corey Lemon, you go Chinasa. You said that name a lot tonight. You bet I have. You know what? Chinasa and those guys are playing well. Corey Lemon just attacks a strong guy. When he sees the ball carrier get the ball, he's downhill. It's definitely you know, four down territory right now for Texas A&M. So if you don't convert this, you're staying out there if you're on offense. Third and five in such situations. The Aggies are two for six tonight. Cowboys bringing extra rushers. Ball batted in the air and then caught by the lineman off the deflection. Matt Allen, the center, after Moala deflected it. Easier said than done if you're an offensive lineman, but you got to knock this ball down. You know, I know these offensive linemen they never get a chance to carry the football. Their eyes get big, the ball's in their face. Great job by Allen just catching the football, but bat it down because now it's fourth and long instead of three, third, and five. Moala, the third block deflected pass tonight by the quarterback. 
Heads up play by Lemon to get Allen on the ground quickly, too. Fourth down. First down, Aggies. A strike to Ryan Swope. This is where I judge a quarterback. When you gotta make a play, Jesse, you step up and you keep moving and you focus to deliver. And look at Ryan Swope, the high school running back, using those shifty hips on that open route, working the base across over the middle of the field, able to weave into the open area. Give Gerard Johnson credit, you're right, Craig. He's made some big time throws on third and fourth and long tonight. After that fumble, to hit all six of his passes on this drive. As well to the character for the Aggie leader. Bounces it to watch it And again, a failure on first down. Yeah, a lot of that's because Bill Young just saw the corner blitz, right? Bill sitting there thinking, okay, I'm tired of sitting back here, letting you guys complete first down for seven. But this has been interesting because they were almost 50-50 play calling on offense. Now the last couple series, they've been throwing it a lot. They've abandoned that running game that they had so much success with earlier in the game. Johnson running it down to the 20. He'll be about three yards short of the first down. Bill Young has now gone back to big zone defense, which means less players are in the box. This is an opportune time if you're AM to run the football a little bit. There's still nine minutes left in this game. And I think the play calling on that one there indicative of the mindset, four downs to get 10 yards. What Sherman needs is three here. Aggies on the edge of the red zone, down by two touchdowns. They will run it. Kristen Michael. Michael's still on his feet. The whistles are blowing. Michael thinks he wasn't down. They'll come in and mark him down at the 16-yard line. That's where the spot appears to be. That'll be enough for a first down. Now, in our headsets, now, I didn't hear the linesman comes in and, and blows his whistle after Michael is way down the field. He's not down. He's this not is a down. blown job by the official. It, the linesman, did you hear him come in running in and whistling it? Wow. If that whistle's blown, that play's dead. Well, now, if his forearm hits the ground, he's down. Okay. So, yeah, good point. He, I, from behind, you didn't see no, that. No, you didn't. Timeout, Texas A&M. First time out of the half. So Texas A&M desperately needing to finish off this drive with a touchdown. Trailing by 14, but inside the 20. ESPN's college football front is served by Applebee's. See what's new on Applebee's two-for-20 menu. Classics you love and new flavors you'll crave. And in part by... Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. Tailgating scene here in Stillwater, Boone Pickens Stadium is tremendous, and what a great game to kick off Kings for tailgate week. Oh, that looks pretty tasty right now. Think they got anything left over? Use a little something right now, but tell you what, wetting your appetite for a great finish. Texas A&M on the move here. Oklahoma State outscored the Aggies 28-0 in the second half. Johnson complete to Jeff Fuller. Fuller will be marked down at the 11. That's the guy that down here in the red zone, confidence by Gerard Johnson high with this receiver. And I think the sense of urgency now goes up for Texas A&M. You have to score a touchdown here, considering what Oklahoma State has done on offense their last several possessions. Johnson coughed up a fumble that was returned for a touchdown. Aggies have answered with this, the 12th play of the drive. Kristen Michael down to the five. It'll be first and goal for Texas A&M. Craig, I know you love watching that. You love watching running backs that get behind their pads with a low pad level and deliver the strike. And you have to know as a running back when they're coming in with a blitz, run blitz or pass blitz, whatever it is, that you've got to run past arm tackles, and he's low in doing it. Clock winding down towards seven minutes to go. Move 
Goodman on the right side of the Aggie line. False start. Offense. Number 71. Five yard penalty. First down. Right tackle Brian Thomas. Moves AM back five. I'd be telling him right now, hey, Brian Thomas, let it go. It's over. You know, get your head out of the, you know, your, your dauber up, man. Don't make another mistake. They're going to be coming with pressure here. You got to get your head on. First and goal for d and Michael out of the backfield, and he gets the five back. It'll be second and goal. Jesse, you're right. I mean, they got to score, score pretty quickly here because they have not stopped Oklahoma State in the second half. No, that's just it. You know, the, the urgency goes up, and I think that's why Mike Sherman took that timeout on a couple plays ago to talk to his guys about, hey, we're going to get going up tempo, start getting lined up, and start thinking about seven. We're not thinking about three. Johnson into the end zone. Fuller can't hold it. Third down. That's the first time Fuller has failed to come down with a jump ball thrown by Gerard Johnson. Certainly smaller windows when you get deep down here inside the red zone. Yeah, the ball was up high and hard. Very tough pass to catch. Tried to use Fuller's size advantage. He's 6'4. Roderick Brown is out there on him. He's 5'8. There's that, there's that Chinasa out there. You've been calling a lot of his name tonight. Johnson trying to run it in himself. He won't get there. Ori Lemon stops him. It'll be fourth and goal for the Aggies. Not sure you don't call a timeout here. Make sure you know exactly what you got dialed up here. No question. You have to have this now. You need this play for a score. Clock's winding. We're under six minutes to go. This is one of those calls you, you want to make sure you got right. Aggies are three for four on fourth down tonight. None more important than this one. Johnson to the end zone. Touchdown AM Kendrick McNeil. Jeff Fuller on the left side. You go back to your money. You know who's there. Watch the drive inside, and then the separation coming back. Beautiful throw. He really had both receivers. He had the back shoulder throw to Fuller. He decided to work the inside. Really put that football down low. We have a seven-point game, and Mike Sherman said maybe in crunch time they needed matchups on the linebackers. They got one on James Thomas. They score a touchdown, and now can the Aggies get a stop? Trailing by seven. Took 16 plays and 80 yards, nearly seven and a half minutes, but AM finally has its first points of the second half. And they still have a heartbeat after Kendrick McNeil hauled in the touchdown pass, 35-28 to score. Great action coming up Saturday, including also from the Big 12, the Red River rivalry, Oklahoma and Texas. Some will see Wisconsin and Michigan State in powerful running games in a battle of unbeatens. Virginia Tech taking on undefeated North Carolina State. Regional coverage 3.30 Eastern on ABC or ESPN. How about NC State going under the radar a little bit here? 4-0 for the first time since 2002. We had a chance to watch them live a couple weeks yeah. ago. They're there for real. Yeah, I get a chance to announce Wisconsin, Michigan State. Can't wait to see that. Bielema and his boys had to play a little defense. Michigan State, they got an offense. Mark D'Antonio returning to the team in limited capacity as a and kicks off. And Justin Gilbert, great speed. Gilbert into Aggie territory before he's run out of bounds. Well, you could use good field position after that if you want to run some clock and maybe get the clinching score. And what a great return by Gilbert, 45 yards. Oklahoma State came into the game fourth worst in the country in terms of kickoff returns. What a monster return from the true freshman, Justin Gilbert. 
Gilbert was the state champion in Texas in the 100 meters at a 10-6, and his coaching staff raves about his speed and the ability he has, the upside. And Gerard Johnson, who just led a touchdown drive, needs his defensive teammates to come up with a stop. Brandon Whedon chased by Von Miller. It's incomplete. That's Brandon Whedon's inexperience because you're trying to bleed the clock. You're on the perimeter of the field. You do not want to throw an incompletion. Stop it. Instead, run forward, get what you can, stay in bounds, keep the game clock moving. One of the things about this offense, Dana Holgerson showing you right there. We're going to come out. We're going to continue to run our offense. High percentage throws and stay in bounds. Oh, snap. Kendall Hunter. Now the folks have a third down as Hunter gets it inside the 40. And, and this is the kind of game with the momentum as it is with the Aggies offense right now. Gerard Johnson being hot. Oklahoma State doesn't want to give it back to him. If you're thinking field goal here, Dan Bailey, a senior kicker, has along this year a 49. Need a few more yards to get him within that distance. Whedon, quick pass to Hunter is incomplete. Throwing two incompletions on this drive is almost the worst thing possible that could have happened for Oklahoma State. Now you're going to punt the ball and try to pin the Aggies deep. That's the good news about the return. You're going to make Gerard Johnson now have to drive the field because of the return, but they should have gotten so much more out of this drive. I, I, you know, it is. It's an Achilles heel to this offense and this system. You know, when you get to a situation like this, you need to be able to run the football. And I know Dana Holgerson's thinking high percentage throws, complete the pass. We didn't get it done. Oklahoma State will have to give it up. Ball hits inside the five, and the Cowboys can't keep it out of the end zone. And Gerard Johnson and the Aggies will have it 80 yards away from a tying score when you come back. Playing today. 35 28, 420 to go at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. Gerard Johnson led the Aggies last time down the field. Well, this is why we're saying you know that Oklahoma State didn't want to give it back to them because of the critical composure and the big plays made on third and goal, fourth and long throughout the second half. He has turned the football over three times tonight, but when they've needed it the most on the big downs, Gerard Johnson has delivered for this Texas AM offense. On the night, AM is four out of five on fourth down. Two of those fourth down conversions came on the last drive, including the touchdown pass on fourth and goal. Johnson holds virtually every quarterback record there is to hold at AM, and he's tied to school record for completions with 34 so far. But he'll need a few more. Down seven in the fourth quarter. And now he has the record to himself, but only. A short gain. Hudson Prelo, the freshman tight end. Still lots of time now for Texas A&M because they did not burn a timeout on their last fourth down before scoring a touchdown. They still have two in their pocket. And the fact that there were two incomplete passes in that previous possession by Oak State really set. Swope has it again. Swope on his feet. Inside the 10. Ryan Swope. Touchdown, Aggies. Well, you expected a shootout, and boy, do we have it. Four plays, 80 yards, and we are an extra point away from being tied with inside three minutes to go. And this crowd is shocked right now. Ryan Swope ended the 09 season with 16 catches. He was on a roll. He brought that into this season to start out with 13 for 106 against SFA. When you get a former high school running back one-on-one -on -one in space, this is the result. Gerard Johnson showed you his leadership, his understanding of the quarterback position, and his composure on this play. He used a long cadence, a hard count, which forced Oklahoma State to show the blitz. It allowed the Texas A&M offensive line to figure out who they were picking up. He didn't panic. He made an easy throw for the completion. It results in a major big touchdown. Well, Johnson 
that a school that hasn't been noted for great quarterbacks in its history is going to hold all the numerical records. But it's moments like this, drives like this on the road in games like this where you can really establish a legacy. Go back to thinking about that huddle, that conversation Mike Sherman had with his team. What was this team, This they were out of it. This game was like, wow, Oklahoma State was steamrolling the action. But he's put the ball in the hands of Gerard Johnson, and Gerard Johnson has delivered. Great numbers in the second half. He's overcome the turnovers, and now Brandon Whedon will have an opportunity to answer. Boy, Gilbert had a great kickoff return last time. The flag flies in late. Gilbert was stopped just short of the 25. <laughs> Conference about the penalty and exactly where Oklahoma State will start this possession. During the return, it looked a block in the back. Number 87 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So now the Cowboys will be 90 yards away from the go-ahead touchdown because they can get in field goal range. Boy, well, Stanford and Oregon, if they're going to live up to this one, they've got some work to do, but it'll be a great one Saturday night on ABC. Some will see it on ESPN, too. Andrew Luck and the Cardinal under Jim Harbaugh, a resurgent team moving into the top ten. Oregon, the nation's top scoring offense. Led by LaMichael James, who's averaging over eight yards per carry. It's a touchdown waiting to happen. Ducks and Cardinals Saturday night on ABC. Brandon Whedon, Blackman. And the Cowboys will move the chain. A 90-yard scoring drive may seem like a long way, but the good news for Oklahoma State heading into this game, they had 16 scoring drives that took two minutes or less. 2.45 left on the clock, all three timeouts. That's an eternity. But you're not in a hurry right now. Brandon Whedon underneath has his man Josh Cooper in the Aggies play that beautifully. You know what I mean, Jesse? I mean, this is this is one of the, hey, you got the ball, you have control of the game, get to the line of scrimmage, but don't be in a hurry. And by the way, you don't want to give the ball back too quickly to redraw Johnson. He's on fire right now. Number 40, Von Miller. Haven't heard a sack from him yet. Here he is, he's out here. Miller coming. Cooper has it again. And now Oklahoma State is looking at a third down. How will Texas A&M play this? I got to be honest, I'm not so sure if I'm A&M. I'm calling a timeout. Yeah, that's what I mean. To get it back to Gerard Johnson because they can't stop us right now if I'm Mike Sherman. Top of the field, Justin Blackman, 81. It's been money on the short third and uh, third downs. Minute and a half to go. Third down. Whedon laying it up for Antium, and he couldn't hold on to it. Dustin Harris was right there with him, and the clock stops on the incompletion, and AM's going to get it back. Craig, you talked about which team could execute down the stretch, make the plays when they had the opportunities. This is a big time opportunity for Hubert Antium, who led the team in receptions last year, that hits him right in the hands. Frustration from Dana Holgerson, an opportunity there to come up with a big play. Instead, Oklahoma State, Sharp, might have been his worst punt of the night, but it's covered well. And AM will take over, 116 to go. They just have to get into field goal range to pull this thing out. Oklahoma State twice has come back from 14-point deficits. Now AM has done so to come back to tie the game. Okay, Bill Young in that last series, when Texan AM went down, he did not pressure Gerard Johnson. I, I think he changes that up. You, he, jo, Gerard's hot. And really, I think the superiority of those wide receivers for Texas AM, we talked about this maybe being the best group they've ever had. They've been dominating on the perimeter of the field and over the middle of the field tonight for Gerard Johnson. They're winning their individual battles. Johnson has been brilliant in the fourth quarter, thrown for over 200 yards. 
slides down after a short gain. and m will be up quickly to get to the line as the clock winds towards a minute to go in the fourth quarter. Randy Bullock is the field goal kicker. You see his numbers. You throw that ball away, Jesse? I th yeah, I, I don't think it's worth a three-yard gain to bleed 30 seconds off the clock. AM has lost a lot of time. Johnson to the outside. That's dangerous. In the air and almost picked off by Devin Hedgeman. Keep in mind, I, I don't know how much confidence Mike Sherman has in his kicker, Randy Bullock. You'll see the throw right here. Forcing that in very lucky that was not intercepted But against that by you two weeks ago They made it down to the 31 yard line of Florida International They had a fourth and 11 and he went for it because he didn't think his kicker could make it Now a third down We wondered if A&M could get it back now you wonder if Oklahoma State can get it back for another shot Now in the middle to Johnson. Watch a coup with the catch, and it's enough for the first down. Watch a coup has made three plays on third and long for first downs tonight. Drives back to the ball, wants it a lot. Clock stops on first downs inside two minutes of the half. Now Kristen Michael. They're giving him the catch, and the clock's going to wind there. A&M's going to have to use a timeout. That's another example of a play that just doesn't need to be caught. A heads-up play there. If you're the receiver, just let it fall incomplete. If it's a well-thrown ball, he's thinking his receiver catches it underneath, runs to the sidelines. But it's not worth the three-and-a-half-yard nope. gain. So that's two plays, right? When you start yeah. really breaking down a two-minute drill offense, yeah. the one that Gerard Johnson decides to run, and that one right there, very, very costly. Quarterbacks have to be resilient. And Gerard Johnson, despite the gaudy numbers, this this is how he started the fourth quarter. Careless with the football. James Thomas scoop and scored from 63 out. 13 turnovers in three games. Mike Sherman has not given up on his quarterback. Didn't do it in their last one. And he's been paid back in nice way for it because Gerard's coming down with his football team. I think if you're Texas A&M, your goal right now with 26 seconds left is to get to the 30-yard line of Oklahoma State and try to set up a 47-yard field goal to win this thing. Johnson's had a career night. Does he have a game-winning drive in him? Down the middle, intercepted! Fourth pick of the night! Sean Lewis with the interception! John Lewis is a true freshman who Bill Young compares to the Miami Hurricanes great young linebacker Sean Spence. Young coach Spence there. This young man, a true freshman on a Thursday night coming out making a play. Gerard Johnson got greedy on this throw. There are eight players in coverage. He's trying to throw a deep in route, and there were four black jerseys around his wide receiver, Jeff Fuller. That's a throw Gerard Johnson would want to have back, and now all of a sudden Oklahoma State knocking on the door close to field goal range. 16 seconds, a career long for Dan Bailey of 51 yards. It means they don't need a lot. Whedon. They're within that 51 range. The catch by Cooper. They're going to need to call the timeout. Craig, to go back and you talk about two-minute drive execution at the end of games, understanding when to throw balls away, understanding not to, when not to catch balls, understanding when not to force throws. I think now you're at a point, Jesse, where with one more play, you run it. If you like this hash, you run it up the middle. If you want to run to the middle, from wherever your kicker feels comfortable, that's where you take this football. As it sits right now, guys, it would be a 48-yard field goal. Kicker for the Colts. Dan Bailey is a senior from Mustang, Oklahoma. He's been around. Experienced guy, but still a nerve-wracking situation for any kicker. And Johnson, the turnover bug, 
fighting him for the second straight game. The Aggies escaped it against Florida International. And now tonight, Oklahoma State perhaps seconds away from a game-winning field goal attempt. Kendall Hunter. Pick up a few more yards. The Aggies might want to hold him up a little bit. Clock's still running now. They're going to have to get it quickly. <laughs> and Oklahoma State came a couple of ticks away from blowing that. Oh, man. Awareness again, get on the ground. Yeah, well, you know what? He, he probably not expecting he's going to be able to push and carry a pile for three yards. Well, here you go, guys. When we, when we arrived at the stadium a few hours before the game, there was a lot of wind swirling around. I'm looking at the goalposts right now. Absolutely no movement. The wind has really died down. It made this kicking environment, this situation, much better for Dan Bailey with only two seconds remaining. Before the game, we wondered, see, not much wind on that end of the stadium. That's the west end, the rare east-west stadium as Brandon Whedon wants to let Bailey concentrate. It'll be a 41-yard field goal attempt. And keep an eye on Mike Sherman, and he'll try to ice the senior. We've seen some coaches wait even a little bit longer before. Flashing the timeout signal. So here it is, the opportunity for both of these teams to set a course to perhaps being a dark horse in the Big 12 South. Sherman trying to fire up his field goal block unit for a desperation block attempt. And what was supposed to be a rebuilding year for Oklahoma State. This could be a pivotal win that really sets their season on a positive course if Bailey can knock through this 41-yard field goal. Gerard Johnson watching. The anticipation in the stadium. For the game. Oklahoma State wins it. Bedlam until the Cowboys play the Sooners, but there's a version of it on the field as Oklahoma State wins at 38 35. This was said and, con and considered a barometer game by both football teams and coaching staffs. Oak State just took the needle home with them. For a young team that had 16 guys start a game for the first time this season, very inexperienced. Showed a lot of poise late, very opportunistic on defense to give themselves an opportunity to win this game. Mike Sherman, known in dismay as his team, gave up a 14-point lead. Gerard Johnson's turnovers were costly, the last one being the most costly of them all. Let's go down on the field now with the winning head coach, Mike Gundy's with Jen Brown. Coach, momentum swing after momentum swing tonight into the game. You were down big, then you gave up a big lead. How are you guys able to pull off the win tonight? Well, we made a big play in the uh, defensive side of the ball, and uh, as a true freshman, intercepts the ball and runs it down, and then uh, Dan Bailey uh, uh, makes the field goal. They tried to ice him, so I'm really proud of our team for fighting back. A lot of mistakes, but we overcome it and find a way to win the game. Now your, your quarterback seemed to settle in there the second half. What were you most impressed about his play tonight? Well, well, he made the adjustments at halftime and along with the offense we played terrible in the first half 
and we settled him down. We came up with the plan. He set his feet and made some better throws, and we had some guys break some tackles. So I'm really proud of them coming out and performing in the second half. Now, earlier this week, you told us that you weren't sure how good of a team you had. What do you think now after tonight's game? Well, I'm still not sure. Uh, I do know that I'm proud of them for the way they competed, being behind 14-0, and then again, what happened late in the game. We have a lot of room to improve, but I'm, I'm proud of these guys. There's a lot of young guys, and they're getting better and better. So, you know, what can you say? You find a way to win the game. All right, Coach. Great job tonight. Thank you. And, Jen, on this night, Mike Gundy is the man, and he's got win number 40 in his Oklahoma State head coaching career. Here is our Wrangler five-star player of the game. It is Dan Bailey, the senior who came through with the 40-yard game-winning field goal to cap the Cowboys' fourth quarter rally. Texas A&M had over 500 yards of offense. They ran more than 100 plays, but the turnovers were devastating. Five turnovers from their quarterback, Gerard Johnson, and Bailey came through with the winner. Don't overestimate the impact this has off the field as well. These are two programs that go head-to-head -head in recruiting in the offseason. This is a big win for Oklahoma State in more ways than one. We opened the night saying that neither of these teams have been tested both certainly underwent some tests tonight and it is the homestanding Cowboys who come through in the end and with flying colors mostly the color orange 38 35 the final Oklahoma State beats Texas A&M Sports Center is next this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Craig James Jesse Palmer Jed Brown and our entire Thursday night ESPN crew I'm Reese Davis saying good night after a great one in Stillwater Oklahoma